now. WCLU Sports presents Glasgow Scotties Basketball. Oh, I love the school spirit. I love our basketball team. We're going to win. Glasgow Scotties Basketball on WCLU, 103.1 FM and AM 1490. Streaming free at WCLUradio.com and on the Glasgow Scotties and WCLU YouTube channels. Glasgow Scotties Basketball on WCLU. Brought to you by Don Franklin Auto, Walbert Trucking, South Central Bank, HVAC Services, South Central Rural Telecommunications Cooperative, Garcia's Grill, Elmore Realty and Auction, Hardee's, TJ Regional Health, McDonald's, Monticello Bank, and Kentucky Farm Bureau agent Joe Myers. Basketball is my favorite sport. Going courtside now for your Don Franklin Auto countdown to tip off. Hi, we're live here at Caverna High School tonight. We've got the Lady Colonels and the Lady Scotties. The Lady Colonels are coming in at 2 and 15 on the year, 0 oh and 3 in the district. The Lady Scotties come in at 3 and 18 in the year, and 0 oh and 5 in the district. The Lady Colonels are coming off a loss to Washington County last night, 74 to 29. And the Lady Scotties are coming off a loss to South Warren last night, 56 to 40 in Scotty Gym. We will come back after a four-minute timeout. We'll begin the Don Franklin pregame show, and I'll bring in my broadcast partner, Joe Myers, and we will come back after a four-minute timeout on WCLU Sports. Hardy's two for five dollar breakfast bake goodness into your morning. Choose a biscuit with sausage and egg, biscuit and gravy, or a country fried steak biscuit. Any two, just five dollars. Hardy's goodness in the making. Get exclusive offers on the Hardy's app. Hey, son, what you doing? Daddy, I'm going to own a dealership one day. All right, I'll dream with you. From one small dream to over 25 dealerships in the state of Kentucky, we have set out to provide Kentuckians with reliable vehicles and the best customer service for over 50 years. This may have started with a simple dream, but our dedication to our customers will go on for generations. Are you looking for a new career where you'll be a part of a family-owned business for over 50 years? Walbert Trucking is a trucking company based right here in Glasgow. With Walbert Trucking, you'll get full benefits, great pay, and 401k. And you'll be home daily. Unlimited possibilities await you. Apply today and become a member of the Walbert Trucking Team. 106 Sean Lane in Glasgow, 651-6784. We're not superheroes, but when people need us, we answer the call. We're not weathermen, but we know the Kentucky seasons like the back of our hands. For over 40 years, we've serviced any brand, any time, with the same day service guarantee. Now that's a big promise, and that's probably why no one else does it. So when dealing with your heating and cooling, call HVAC Services, and you'll have the right team by your side. When you come into Garcia's Grill, you're welcomed with a smile and you'll love the atmosphere. Garcia's was voted by the community as the best overall restaurant for the past two years. Great food at a great value. They serve fresh, delicious, traditional Mexican dishes, incredible pasta, burgers, steaks, and seafood. People say you can never get burnt out on this restaurant because of all the amazing choices. Garcia's Grill, owned and operated by the Gomez Garcia family. Check them out on North Ray Street in Glasgow and on Facebook. Garcia's Grill, a different kind of Mexican restaurant. South Central Bank has been investing in the Glasgow community for over 50 years. During that time, we've learned a thing or two about hard work, relationships, and a vision for success. South Central Bank is designed to make a difference in the prosperity of our customers and the communities it serves. We want to be a part of your success. Visit SouthCentralBank.com. South Central Bank. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. With a history of scoring touchdowns and breaking records, Dakota Elmore knows a thing or two about hard work. At Elmore Realty and Auction, his team, often referred to as the A-Team, applies that same work ethic in how they serve this community. With a combined 200 years of experience, the team serves our commercial industry, helps families find their dream home, and makes your auction an easy, profitable, and positive experience. Elmore Realty and Auction, trusted since 1935. Check them out on Facebook for listings and auctions. 
If you already have internet through SCRTC, there's a pretty good chance your speed just went up, maybe even paying less. And if you don't, check on fiber optic with SCRTC in your area because 500 meg is now only 70 bucks. That's 500 down and upload. And if you want more speed, SCRTC got it, up to 5 gig of it. Make the switch right now at SCRTC.com and we'll do the install free. This won't last forever. With unmatched customer support, SCRTC, your best and last Internet provider. Hardy's newest handcrafted recipe, candied bacon. Coated with caramelized brown sugar and a hint of pepper to add a whole new level of goodness to breakfast, lunch, dinner, or anytime. Hardy's goodness in the making. High school sports is on. WCLU. We're back here at Caverna High School. It's Chase Landrum. I'll bring in the legendary Joe Myers tonight for the Don Franklin pregame show. Joe, it's good to have you back again. Yep, good to be back. Is uh, I appreciate Octavius Barber uh, filling in for the last several uh, games, and uh, hopefully Octavius will be able to do some more. But always good to be back with you, Chase, on the air and watch little Lady Scotty and Scotty basketball. Yeah, the Lady, we got the Lady Colonels and the Lady Scotties. The Lady Colonels are coming in two and fifteen on the year, zero and three in the district. The Lady Scotties are coming in three eight, three and eighteen, and zero and five in the district. All five district contests, though, for the Lady Scotties has been hotly contested, though, really. So the record's a little skewed. They played a lot closer games. The Lady Colonels only averaged 21 points a game. Yeah, this is a, a game where you've got teams that are on losing streaks. Glasgow, I think, I counted up, has lost nine in a row. Caverna, I think, has lost 14 in a row. So somebody's going to come out of here with a victory tonight. And certainly uh, Glasgow, it appears, is the better team on paper, Chase. But... Look, you man, you got to come out here. You got to play. You know, you just never know over here at Caverna. You, some weird things have happened over here in, in past years. Uh, and so if the Lady Scotties do not come ready to play, uh, they could walk out here with their 10th straight loss. But hopefully they'll break that losing streak tonight here against the Lady Colonel. Yeah, the Lady Scotties are coming off a loss to the Lady Spartans last night, 56-40. to 40. It was another story of turning over the basketball as has been an issue in recent games as well. They had 19 last mm. night and only shot, I think it was about 30% from the field as well and was only 59% at the line last night. Struggled to turn the ball over, turn the ball over much against that South Warren pressure. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to watch that game last night, unfortunately, but uh, I, I was a little bit surprised by by the score. I thought it might be a little bit more competitive than what it was. South Warren, I know in, in the past, has had some great basketball teams. I don't think they're quite as good as they have been in uh, in some years past. But uh, hopefully, like you said, the Lady Scotties can, can rebound tonight. You know, it's a quick turnaround here. You just kind of have to flush that performance last night and come out and, and hopefully play much better here this evening. Yes, the Lady Scotties are on, a, I guess, playing a bunch of games here in about two weeks because all the rescheduling. All the teams around having to reschedule with the snow. They actually play on Thursday night this week, too, against Clinton County. So three games in four days for the Lady Scotties this yeah, week. Yeah, it's, it's, it's unusual in basketball to have a Friday night off. And, and uh, the boys and girls need to one play this Friday. They both play that doubleheader against Clinton County at home. Uh, and it's always, when you play in Clinton County, always nice to play at home. You don't, <laughs> that trip to Albany is not ever any fun. But, uh, but, uh, but yeah, you know, it is, it is a, a, you know, three games in four days here for Lady Scotty. So, you know, you're talking about endurance there as well. You got to, uh, you know, get your rest when you can. Uh, but, uh, you know, you hope by this point in the season that, that everybody's in good physical condition and, and, uh, can handle that kind of stretch. We've got three games in four days. And this is a game maybe for the ladies' guys where they can maybe hit their stride going into the end of the regular season and also into the postseason as well. Maybe they need a game like this to get back in rhythm. Yeah, I mean, a win would certainly be good no matter who it comes against or when it comes. Like you said, the Clinton County game, I'm looking at their record. They're 6-11, so that's a game where you'd think Glasgow would – have an opportunity to get a win. Uh, then they got Monroe County. Monroe County is 6-10, and 10, so uh, a opportunity there as well. And then you get Allen County, Scottsville. Uh, so you're right, Chase. I mean, those those games right there, the, the, the one tonight plus the three coming up are all winnable games. And that doesn't mean Glasgow will win them, but they're all winnable games for the Lady Scotty. Yes, I agree, Joe. The Lady Scotty are coming off that performance last night where Jacali Green led them with 12 points last night on four of 14 shooting from the field. She had five rebounds, and I believe two of those were on the offensive boards in that ball game as well. So she had a pretty good game last night as well. And then five, six other Scotty players scored 
Two of them scored six points, and the other four scored four points. So scoring was spread out last night a little bit. And then Matt Clayton Hudson last night for South Warren was the killer for the ladies. Guys, she had 22 points last mm. night. Well, wow. yeah, you mentioned Ja'Kylie, and it's been a couple of weeks since I did a game, but the while the last stretch of games that I did there, I thought she was really coming on. So uh, I, I'm not surprised to hear that she played well last night against South Warren. Hopefully she'll continue that here tonight. Yeah, we will come back after a three-minute timeout. They will do the national anthem here, and we will give you the TJ Regional Health starting lineups. That will conclude our Don Franklin pregame show. We'll be back after a three-minute timeout on WCLU Sports. Have you injured yourself playing a sport or exercising? Sports medicine experts at TJ Regional Health are trained to get you back on the road to recovery. Whether you're dealing with sprains, fractures, knee and shoulder injuries, or other common injuries, our goal is to prevent illness and injury in active individuals of all ages and help prevent future problems to maximize your performance. Find out more at tjregionalhealth.org slash rehab. Patients first, team always, TJ Rehabilitation Services. Monticello Bank first opened its doors in 1895 as a single office in Monticello, Kentucky. Today, there are 21 NBC locations across the Commonwealth. From home loans to commercial lending, Monticello Bank offers a wide variety of convenient financial services and competitive rates from local people you know and trust. Visit them at 1434 Happy Valley Road in Glasgow and let them help make the financial side of your life a little easier. Monticello Bank, where people matter. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. We know there's a big difference between being in a community and being part of the community. That's why here in Glasgow, we cheer on the Scotties. We work hard every day to make a positive impact on the community we call home. Behind our golden arches, we strive daily to serve delicious food and treats. If you could only smell this McDonald's ad, you'd smell how delicious this burger and fries really are. Join our McTeam. To learn how, text KY209 to 38000. Benefits include a sign-on bonus up to $500. Kentucky Farm Bureau agents wear a lot of hats. There are coaches, volunteers, church members, neighbors, someone who's there when you need them, especially when you need them most. That may be a lot of hats, but they're all the perfect fit. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. Hey, son, what you doing? Daddy, I'm going to own a dealership one day. All right, I'll dream with you. From one small dream to over 25 dealerships in the state of Kentucky, we have set out to provide Kentuckians with reliable vehicles and the best customer service for over 50 years. This may have started with a simple dream, but our dedication to our customers will go on for generations. The game of basketball. Glasgow Scotty's basketball on WCLU. Brought to you by Don Franklin Auto, Balbert Trucking, South Central Bank, HVAC Services, South Central Rural Telecommunications Cooperative, Garcia's Grill, Elmore Realty and Auction, Hardee's, TJ Regional Health, McDonald's, Monticello Bank, and Kentucky Farm Bureau agent Joe Myers. Now back to courtside for the opening tip off. Game time. Chase Landrum alongside Joe Myers. We have got the TJ Regional Health starting on it. First, we're going to start with the Caverna Lady Colonels. Sorry, starting at guard is going to be Jordan Bethel. She's a freshman. Starting at forward is going to be Cadence Brown. She's a junior. Also starting at forward is going to be Summer Sally. She's a sophomore. Starting at forward is going to be Shea Martin. She's a sophomore. And starting at forward is going to be Hannah Korn. She's a sophomore. Head coach of the Lady Colonels is Andre Barber. Lady Colonels are 2-15 on the season, 0-3 oh, in the district. Now, for the Lady Scotties, we're going to start guard Addie Slagle. She's an eighth grader. Also starting guard is going to be Ja'Kali Green. She's a freshman. Starting at guard is going to be freshman Kayla Kirkpatrick. Starting at forward is going to be Cynthia Austin. She's a junior. And also starting at forward is going to be Carly Hagen. She's a freshman. Head coach of the Lady Scotties is Kelsey Kirkpatrick. Lady Scotties are 3-18 on the year, 0-5 oh, in the district. Needing a win tonight to get back on the winning ways. Losing nine in a row coming into this game. Yeah, you mentioned Caverna only averages uh, scoring 21.6 points a game. They only shoot 
14.5% overall from the field, 12.3% from three-point range. So, I mean, obviously, this is a team that struggles uh, on the offensive end. So, uh, if you're Glasgow, you just come out, play your game, and, and you feel like if you play, you know, a decent ball game, you're going to come out here with a victory. Caverna does give up almost 70 points a game, so they struggle on both ends of the floor, it looks like. So we'll see how it goes for Lady Scotties. Hopefully they play well. It looks like the Lady Colonels only have seven players dressed tonight as well. From the from the name, names I had in the scorebook, they had 12 on there, so five players is not dressed tonight for so the Lady Colonels. And they are led by Caden Brown, who averages 7.1 points a game, it says on our stats, but Lady Colonels have not put in eight stats like the last eight games. Yeah, so that number may be a little skewed. Yeah, they're they're missing missing a lot of games for sure. So, who knows uh, really what their what their stats are? But you know, you talk about we've talked a lot about how young Glasgow is, and they are extremely young. Now, Caverna is not as young as Glasgow is, but they're a pretty young ball club as well. They start one junior. Everybody else is either a sophomore or a freshman that starts. They've got a couple of eighth graders on the roster. Uh, so, you know, these are, these are two very, very young basketball teams. Give you a quick rundown for our sponsors this year. Well, happy to thank Don Franklin, TJ Regional Health, Walbert Trucking, South Central Bank, HVAC Services, Elmore Realty and Auction, SCRTC, Hardy's Hot and Fresh Play of the Game, and Garcia's Grills Sizzling Stats. As it's going to be Austin in the circle for the ladies, guys, we got the Walbert Trucking tip-off and Cadence Brown. I do not know our three officials tonight. We're in the fifth region tonight, so none of these officials are very familiar to me. Me either, Chase. It's going to be Austin and Brown, and the tip is going to be won by the Lady Scotties. It's going to be green to open up with the ball for the Lady Scotties. She's going to drive down the lane. She's going to put up a floater in the lane. She loses it, and it's going to go out of bounds off of. I think we may have a foul, Chase. Oh, there's going to be a foul instead. It's going to go on Sally. That's going to be her first, team's first of the quarter. It's going to send Ja'Kali Green to the SCRTZ free line where she is going to shoot two. Well, now they say it's on Cadence Brown. <laughs> I've seen the official put three up. I didn't see 23, but Green's first free throw is no good. I saw a three as well. I don't know. I guess uh, we'll mark it on Cadence Brown, though. Green's second attempt is good, so she goes one of two at the line. Gives the Lady Scotties a one to zero lead. As Bethel's looking to get it in, she gets it in to Brown. It's a 2-2-1 two -two pressure for the Lady Scotties. As Brown crosses the timeline, she's going to be doubled. It's going to be a ball tip and almost <laughs> went in as, the, as it goes off in the hands of Corn. It's Bethel that brings it out front for the Lady Colonels, guarded by Slagle. She gets a screen from Sally. She has it in the corner. It's going to go out of bounds off the Lady Scotties. I'm not going to count that as a shot, Chase. No, I, I'm not, <laughs> I, I wouldn't either. Bethel's looking to get in. She's looking, gets it in. It goes right through the hands of Sally, and it's a turnover. It's going to be Kayla Kirkpatrick going to the other end now. She's going to lay it up and miss the layup. Rebound goes to Austin. She puts it back up and in. That's a South Central Bank shot. It's a 3-0 to zero Lady Scotty lead. It's a 2-2-1 two -two press for the Lady Scotty. It's going to be in the middle, but they're going to get a travel there on Cadence Brown. It's going to be a turnover for the Lady Colonels. Two turnovers is 46 seconds into the game. It's going to be Slagle with it for the Lady Scotty. 7-13 left in the opening quarter. She's being guarded by Bethel. It's over to Kirkpatrick, who's wide open for a three-pointer now. It's no good. Rebound goes through the hands of the Lady Colonels in the hands of Cynthia Austin. She's got it inside, kicks it out to Kayla Kirkpatrick again. She's being guarded by Bethel. It's going to be inside to Hagen. Hagen's got it in the lane. She goes up with a shot that's good. That's a South Central bank shot. Well, I love that back down that time by Carly. It's a good, strong move. Just back her defender down to the basket and got the bucket. It's a 2-2-1 two -two press. It's in, it's in the front court to Brown. She comes in, puts a shot up in the lane. It's no good. Rebound goes in the hands of Corn. She puts it back up. It's no good. Rebound goes to Hagen, and it's off to Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick's bringing it up. It's off to Green. Green's going to go to the rim and miss the shot. Rebound goes to Green. No, she's looking to go back up with it. Gets off to Hagen. She goes back up with it. She is fouled. That foul goes on Shea Martin. That's her first team third or second of the quarter, excuse me. It's going to be Carly Hagen to go to the SCRTC free throw line where she is going to shoot two. Her first shot is good. It's a 6-0 lead for the Lady Scotties. Grayson, 
Did you hear that, Chase? They I corrected did. the foul to Martin. As Hagen's second attempt's no good. Martin. Rebound goes to Sally for the Lady Colonels. It's off to Brown in front of us. She's being guarded by Slagle. It's going to be inside there to Corn. She's trapped in the quarter. It's going to be a steal for Kayla Kirkpatrick, though. She had to pick up her dribble. It's off to Austin. Austin's going to bring it in the front court. Austin's going to drive down the lane now, and she is going to lose it out of – it's going to be – no, it's going to be saved inbounds to Brown. Turnover by the Lady Scotty. The Brown brings it in the front court. She's being guarded by Slagle. It's going to be out to Bethel now at the circle. Bethel has it. She's being guarded by Green. She gets a screen from Brown, and it's going to be a foul on Ja'Kali Green. That's going to be her first team's first of the quarter. It's a 6-0 lead for the Lady Scotty. 5.52 left in this opening quarter. And it's going to be Bethel to throw it in for the Lady Colonels. Brown that's got it up top. She's looking. It's going to be a steal by Ja'Kali Green, though. Brown was trying to get the Bethel, but couldn't get the pass to her. Green throws it ahead to Kayla Kirkpatrick. It's back out to Slagle. She's going to fire up a three on the right side. It's no good. Rebound is going to be gotten by Brown, but there's going to be a foul here. That foul goes on Ja'Kali Green. That's her second team, second of the quarter. It's going to be Desiree Maxey to check in for the Lady Colonels. It's going to be Jordy Goodman to check in for the Lady Scotties. She replaces Green, who picks up her second foul. It's a 2-2-1 press for the Lady Scotties here as it's into Bethel. Bethel is trapped. That passes to Brown. Brown's got it now. It's tipped back tipped there by Goodman. It's, Brown's got it in the corner. It's going to be a steal for the Lady Scotties. It's Taylor Kirkpatrick got it. Austin's got it going the other way now. Austin's going to drive down inside. She puts it up and in and a foul. Good job by Cynthia to be able to finish that off. She took a pretty good shove from behind. That is a South Central bank shot as well. It's an eight nothing lead for the Lady Scotties. Austin to the SCRTC free throw line for one. Her shot attempt is no good. Rebound goes to Bethel. Who did they give that foul to, That's what I'm Joe? trying to find out. As Bethel got the rebound down there as well. It's, it's Bethel down inside, gets it off in the hands of Martin. It's going to be out for a three-pointer there by Maxey. It's no good. And they're going to get a foul on the Lady Scotties underneath. That foul was on Desiree Maxey for Caverna Chase. That's going to be her first team. It's fourth as third. It's going to be Kayla Kirkpatrick with the foul there. That's going to be her first team's third of the quarter. As it's Bethel, she gets it in to Brown. Bethel gets it back in the corner, fires up a three. It's no good. Rebound goes to Carly Hagen for the Lady Scotties. It's off to Slagle. Slagle's going to bring it in the front court, fast pace, gets it off to Austin. Austin's going to go down the lane now. She's going to miss the layup. The rebound goes to Brown for the Colonels. As they hurry, as Brown hurries down the court now, she drives inside, and they're going to get a charge there on Brown. It's going to be her second team, fourth of the quarter. Kayla Kirkpatrick took that charge for Lady Scotty's. Good job of her to stand in there and take the contact. That's the uh, second foul on Brown, like you said, Chase. They're going to leave her in the ball game, though. She's their leading scorer, so they feel like they probably need to leave her in. Yeah, and so Riley Strode checks in for the Lady Scotty. She replaces Cynthia Austin. It's an 8-0 lead for the Lady Scotty. 436 left in this opening quarter. As it's a 2-3 zone by Caverna now. It's over to Kirkpatrick. It's back out to Slagle. Slagle gets it over Goodman. She's going to fire up a three now. It's short. Rebound goes to Strode for the Lady Scotty, though. She has it inside, and she tried to throw it off Brown, but it's going to stay Lady Scotty basketball as it goes off Brown. I thought Jordy's arm might have gotten hit when she put that shot up, but it, it wasn't like it was partially the, – the shot was tipped or her arm was hit. And it's going to be Kirkpatrick to throw it in for the Lady Scotties. She's going to get in at Strode. Strode has it in the lane. She's got three colonels around her, and it's going to be a turnover. It's in the hands of Maxie there. Second Glasgow turnover. As it's Brown in the front court. Brown has it guarded by Strode. She goes down inside. Her shot is up in there. It's no good. Rebound goes in the hands of Jordy Goodman. And it's going to be a tip there by Brown. Good awareness by Brown. It's going to stay Lady Scotty basketball. As Sidney Kleikendall and Addison Norris check in for the Lady Scotties. They replace Kayla Kirkpatrick and Carly Hagan. It's going to be Corn to check in for Caverna. She replaces Martin. 
It's Lady Scotty basketball, 8-0 lead, 355 left in the opening quarter. As Goodman gets it back to Slagle, it's a 2-3 zone. It's off to Clyken down the corner. She puts up the short jumper. It's no good. Rebound goes to Sally for Caverna. It's in the hands of Brown now. She has in the front court. It's a 2-3 zone for the Lady Scotty. It's off to Bethel. Bethel's going to drive baseline. She's cut off, gets it out to Corn. It's going to be back to Brown. She puts up a jumper. It's no good. It goes out of bounds off the hands of Sally. It's going to be Lady Scotty basketball. 3.30 left in this first quarter as well. Caverna 0 of 6 from the floor to start the game. As it's Slagle now for the Lady Scotty. She's got against this 2-3 zone. It's over to Goodman. Back to Slagle out top. It's going to be over to Kleikendahl. Back to Slagle. Over to Goodman, who's wide open for a 3 now. She puts it up. It's no good. Rebound goes to Kleikendahl for the Lady Scotty though. Back up to Slagle. Now Addy will fire up a 3 now. It's no good. Rebound goes to Kleikendahl again for the Lady Scotty. Now she's going to put it back up, and it is no good. Rebound's going to be... Almost got there by Sally, but they're going to get a foul on Riley Strode. It's going to be her first, team's fourth of the quarter. It's going to be Lady Colonel basketball. It is Brown with it in the front court. She gets it off in the hands of Maxie. It's a 2-3 zone for the Lady Sky. It's over the Bethel. It's going to be tipped past there by Slagle. Slagle's got it now. Slagle's going the other way now. She's going to put up the shot there. It bounces around and in. That's a South Central Bank shot. It's a 10-0 lead for the Lady Scotties. As Bethel quickly comes in the front court. She's going to be fouled by Addie Slagle. It's going to be her first team, fifth of the quarter. That's going to send Caverna, the Lady Colonels, to the SCRTC free throw line here for the rest of the quarter. It should be the fifth foul of the quarter. Yep, it is. So that's going to send Jordan Bethel to the SCRTC free throw line where she's going to shoot two, trying to get the Colonels on the board. Bethel's first free throw attempt is good. Garner shoots 44% as a team from the uh, strike. Bethel's second temp attempt at the line is good as well. So she goes two of two at the line. It's a 10-2 lead for the ladies, guys. 2.36 left in the opening quarter. And it's Kirkpatrick, Norris, Stroh, Kleikendahl, and Goodman for the ladies, guys. Kirkpatrick has it out over to Kleikendahl. Back to Kirkpatrick, over to Goodman. Back to Kirkpatrick. It's over to Kleikendahl. It's in the middle of Norris. Norris has it. She goes up with a shot. It's no good. Rebound goes to Strode. It's back in the hands of Norris, and they're going to get a travel in violation on Addison Norris. It's going to be... Lady Colonel basketball, the third turnover for the Lady Skies in this ball game. As Bethel's going to bring it in the front court for the Lady Colonels. Gets the 2-3 zone for the Lady Scotties. In the middle now. That is Sally with it. Goes to the corner. Corn. Corn's trapped against this 2-3 zone. And it's going to be a jump ball. We've got a timeout. I They're going to give a timeout to Caverna here. We're going to take it as well. We'll be back after a 30-second timeout on WCOU Sports. Are you looking for a new career where you'll be a part of a family-owned business for over 50 years? Walbert Trucking is a trucking company based right here in Glasgow. With Walbert Trucking, you'll get full benefits, great pay, and 401k. And you'll be home daily. Unlimited possibilities await you. Apply today and become a member of the Walbert Trucking Team. 106 Sean Lane in Glasgow, 651-6784. WCLU. We're back here at Caverna High School. It's Chase Landrum alongside Joe Myers. We got an HVAC Services instant replay. It's going to be the Addie Slagle steal that goes. She gets it and goes all the way down the court, and she's going to lay it in. It gives the Lady Skies a 10 to 2 lead. And it's going to be Lady Colonel basketball on the baseline. Now it's Bethel to get in. It goes right through the hands of Sally. It's going to be a turnover for the Lady Colonels. Eight turnovers for the Colonels. It's going to be Kleikendahl with it to bring it up for the Lady Scotties now. It's a man-to-man -man defense this time. It's over to Goodman in the corner. Kirkpatrick, she's going to fire up a three now. It's good. That's an Elmer Realty auction three-point shot. The 13-2 lead for the Lady Scotties. 138 left in the opening quarter as Bethel has it. She gets it over here to Brown. She's being guarded by Kleikendahl. It's a 2-3 zone for the Lady Scotties once again as Brown has it up top. 
124 left in the opening quarter. Clikendall comes out to get a Browns over to Bethel. Bethel brings it back out top. It's in the middle to Brown. Brown's got it inside now guarded by Norris. They're going to get a foul by, on Addison Norris. It's going to be her first team sixth of the opening quarter. That's going to send Cadence Brown to the SCRTC free throw line where she is going to shoot two. Her first attempt is short. Off the front of the rim. Only real negative for Glasgow so far. Chase fouling a little bit too much in this first quarter. Six opening quarter fouls yep. so far. As Brown's second attempt at the line is no good. Rebound goes to Riley Strode for the Lady Scotties. She gets it off to Kayla Kirkpatrick. Riley already has three rebounds. As Kirkpatrick brings it in the front court to 2 3 zone for the Lady Colonels, it's over to Goodman. Back to Kirkpatrick. It's over to Kleikendahl in the corner to Goodman. She's going to fire up a three in the corner. It's no good. Rebound goes to Strode. She's got it. Puts it back up. Misses it. Rebound goes to Brown for the Lady Colonels. As Brown's going to take it all the way to the other end now. She stops on the baseline, and she's going to get called for a traveling violation. Yeah, moved her pivot foot. It's a 13-2 lead for the Lady Scotties. 47 seconds left in the opening quarter. As it's going to come in to Kirkpatrick here. It's a 2 3 zone for the Lady Colonels. As Kirkpatrick's going to get it over to Goodman. It's back to Kirkpatrick. She's got it out front. And they're going to get an illegal screen here on Riley Strode. That's going to be her second team seventh of this opening quarter. As it's going to be Hannah Jolly to check into the ballgame for the Lady Scotty. She is going to replace Strode. 34 seconds left in this opening quarter. It's a 13-2 lead for the Lady Scotties. It's going to be Bethel with it for the Lady Colonel. She's got out front guard by Kirkpatrick. It's over to Sally now. It's back to Bethel. Bethel's looking to drive. She gets it out for a three-pointer there by Maxie. It's no good. Rebound's going to go off the hands of Martin out of bounds. It's going to be Lady Scotty basketball with 18 seconds left. Not sure who it was, but I think somebody got a finger on that shot that time by Maxie. That's why it wound up so short. It's going to be Kirkpatrick to bring it up for the ladies' guy now. She's guarded by Bethel. It's going to be over to Kleikendahl. Back to Kirkpatrick. Over to Goodman. Ten seconds left in opening court. It's out to Kirkpatrick. Over to Goodman. She's going to fire up another three now. It's good. That's an Elmer Realty in auction three-point shot. It's a 16-2 lead after one quarter for the Lady Scotties. We'll be back after a 30-second timeout on WCLU Sports. We're not superheroes, but when people need us, we answer the call. We're not weathermen, but we know the Kentucky seasons like the back of our hands. For over 40 years, we've serviced any brand, any time, with a same-day service guarantee. Now that's a big promise, and that's probably why no one else does it. So when dealing with your heating and cooling, call HVAC Services, and you'll have the right team by your side. WCLU. We're back here at Cavarna High School. It's Chase Landrum alongside Joe Myers. We've got an HVAC Services instant replay. It's going to be the Jordy Goodman three at the end of the first quarter here. It gives the Lady Scotties a 16 to 2 lead after one quarter of play. As the Lady Colonels did not score a field goal in the opening quarter, Lady Scotties do have two threes in the opening quarter as well. They were two of eight in the opening quarter from the three, Joe? Uh, Glasgow, yes, two of eight. Six, six of 19 overall from the field. Two of eight uh, from three-point range. Two of five at the free throw line. Ten rebounds. Seven of them came on the offensive end. They committed four turnovers in that uh, first quarter. Gla uh, Caverna had nine turnovers in the first quarter. They shoot uh, 0 of seven from the field, 0 of three from three-point range. Two of four at the foul line. Six rebounds, one on the offensive end. It's going to be Green, Hagen, Austin, Kleikendahl, and Seigel for the ladies' guy to open up the second quarter of play. So Jukali back in with two fouls. It's Bethel, Brown, Corn, Sally, and Martin for the Lady Colonels. It's a 2 3 zone for the ladies' guys. It's in the hands of Brown right in front of us, guarded by Kleikendahl against this 2 3 zone. It's going to be back out to Bethel. Bethel's looking to drive. She is cut off by Slagle. It's going to be in the middle to Brown now. Brown's wanting to get inside, and she's going to throw it out of bounds. No, Austin saves it. 
Stops nice. Kleikendahl. Kleikendahl is going to drive down lane. Nice pass to Slagle. Puts it up and in. That That's a South Central bank shot for Addy Slagle. Sorry, Chase. That was nice all the way around. Good save by Austin and a good pass by Kleikendahl and a good finish. As Brown loses it in the lane, it's, it is Slagle with it for the Lady Skies. And she gives it back up to Brown in the lane. It's a turnover for the Lady Skies. And Brown puts it up and in. It's an 18-4 lead for the Lady Skies. Austin has it in the corner now. She's going to drive down inside. A kick out to Green. Green's going to fire up a three. Now it's no good. Long rebound goes to Green. No, nice job by Chicago to get that rebound. Now she's going to fire up a jumper in the lane. It's good. Just a two that time. Right a two that time. It's okay. a 20 to four lead for the Lady Scotties. 6.50 left in the second quarter. As it's Bethel. Gets it off to Brown here on the left side. Just in the left, on the left wing. Brown gets it over to Bethel now on the right wing. She's being guarded by Slagle. In the corner, it goes to Corn back out to Bethel, and it's going to be a tip pass there by Slagle out of bounds. Stays Lady Colonel basketball as it's going to be Maxie to check in for the Colonels, but they're going to take a 30 second timeout. Caverna takes a 30 second timeout. We'll be back after a 30 second timeout on WCLU Sports. When you come into Garcia's Grill, you're welcomed with a smile and you'll love the atmosphere. Garcia's was voted by the community as the best overall restaurant for the past two years. Great food at a great value. They serve fresh, delicious, traditional Mexican dishes, incredible pasta, burgers, steaks, and seafood. People say you can never get burnt out on this restaurant because of all the amazing choices. Garcia's Grill, owned and operated by the Gomez Garcia family. Check them out on North Ray Street in Glasgow and on Facebook. Garcia's Grill, a different kind of Mexican restaurant. CLU. We're back at Caverna High School. It's Chase Landrum alongside Joe Myers. We got an HVAC Services instant replay. It's going to be the Cynthia Austin save ball inbounds here. It goes off to Sydney Clackendall. She brings it down the floor with a nice pass to Addie Slagle. And she lays it up and in. It's a 20 to 4 lead for the ladies. Guys, 632 left in quarter number two. It's Lady Colonel basketball. It's Bethel with it. Gets it into Brown. It's a 2 3 zone here by the Lady Scotties. As Brown's got it up top. She dribbles to the elbow. It gets it in, in the middle there. It looks like to Maxie. It's out to Bethel. She throws it up in the corner. It's no good. Rebound goes back in the hands of Maxie. It's going to be thrown out of bounds. It's going to go to the ladies' guy. It's going to be a turnover for the Lady Colonels. They're 12th on the night. It's going to be Jacali Green to bring it up for the Lady Scotties now. Gets it over to Slagle. Back to Green up top. It's over to Kleikendahl. It's going to be in the corner to Slagle now. She doesn't shoot the shot. It's over to Kleikendahl. It's over to Green. Back to Kleikendahl. Over to Slagle in the corner. She drives baseline now, and she's going to put it up and in. That's a South Central Bank shot. That was an excellent move along the baseline that time by Addy. It's a 22 to 4 lead for the ladies. Guys, 550 left in the half. It's Brown with it up top for the Lady Colonels. Gets a screen there by Martin. Brown has it in the lane. She puts up a shot. It's partially blocked there. Green's got it for the Lady It's up to Kleikendahl. Kleikendahl's going to drive down the lane, and she's going to lay it in. That's a South Central Bank shot. It's a 24 to 4 lead for the Lady Scotties. It's out to Brown. Brown drives down the lane. She loses it, but gets it back, though. It's in the hands of Austin, and they're going to get a foul. That foul goes on Carly Hagen. That's her first team first of the quarter. As five new Lady Scotty players check in, it's going to be Hannah Jolly, it's going to be Riley Strode, Addison Norris, Jordy Goodman, and Kayla Kirkpatrick. It's going to be Bethel throwed in for the Lady Colonels. Brown pulls up for a jumper in the corner. It's no good. Rebound goes to Jordy Goodman for the Lady Scotty. She gets off to Kayla Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick's got it in the front court. It's over to Strode, who wasn't paying attention there. And it, it's a steal for the Lady Colonels. It's in the hands of Brown. Brown's got it. She's going to drive down the lane as Kirkpatrick is sitting there, and they're going to get a charge there on Brown. It's going to be her third team, first of the quarter. Might have been one where I would have not called anything there. There wasn't a whole lot of contact, but I would have probably have let that one go. Yeah. It's going to be Lady Scotty basketball. It's going to be Kirkpatrick with us, a 24-4 lead for the Lady Scotties. Kirkpatrick's got it. It's over to Strode. Back to Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick's going to fire up a three from the top of the key. It's good. 
It's an Elmore Realty in auction. Three point shots, a 27 to four lead. Second three of the night for Kayla. As Bethel's got it for the Lady Colonels. It's gonna be over to Mark Maxey. Maxey has it on the baseline, picks up her dribble, gets it off to Brown. Brown fires up a three, it's gonna be short. Rebound's gonna go, stay saved in bounds there by Sally, and it's gonna be a jump ball between Norris and Martin, and it's gonna go to the Lady Scotties. 4.23 left until halftime, it's 27 to four, Lady Scotties. As it's Kirkpatrick, Goodman, Strode, Norris, and Jolly for the Lady Scotties. Kirkpatrick gets it over to Goodman. Goodman in the middle of Norris, but it's a bad pass by Goodman. It's a turnover for the Lady Scotties. As it's Bethel, brings it in the front court. She now drives, but going to bring it right back out front for the Lady Colonels. It's over to Brown. Brown's being guarded by Strode, and it's 2-3. Now Kirkpatrick comes to get it. Kirkpatrick tips it away from Brown. Brown drives down inside. She's going to fire up a jumper. It's no good. No, it is good. Bounces around and goes in, and she's fouled. That foul goes on Ads Norris. That's her second team, second of the quarter. That's going to send Cadence Brown to the SCRTC free throw, where she's going to shoot one. Nice shot by Brown. Got a kind bounce here in her home gym. Brown's free throw attempts, no good. Rebound goes to Strode for the ladies, guys, and they're going to get her for going out of bounds trying to get that rebound. It's going to be Bethel throwed in for the Lady Colonels. She's looking to get it to Brown. She cannot. She's having to look to get somebody. It's going to be tipped out of bounds there by Strode. It's going to stay Lady Colonel basketball. 3.50 left till halftime. It's going to be Bethel throwed in for the Lady Colonels. And they're going to get a foul here. I'm not sure who this foul is going to be. Maybe Raleigh That's kind of what I was just thinking. That is going to be her third, team third of the quarter. I think they're going to say she grabbed Brown. It's going to be Hagen check in for the Lady Guys. She replaces Strode. As Bethel throws it in the corner. Look to Brown. Bethel got it back. Bethel drives baseline now. She's cut off. It's in the middle there to, to Sally. Her shot's no good. Rebound went to Martin. But it's going to be in the hands of Kirk Patrick now who's racing up the sideline. She's got it. She stops at the three-point line. It's going to be out to Goodman. Goodman's got it now. It's over to Norris. And she has to go track it down the corner. It's going to be a turnover for the Lady Scotties. I think. And they're going to say it's going to be Lady Scotty basketball after all of that. It's going to be green. turnover by Glasgow, then another turnover by Brown. <laughs> she could not, She was tiptoeing the line down there trying to oh, stay in got, bounds. Yeah, Coach uh, <laughs> Barber for Caverna is contending that she got I thought nudged she got, a little I bit. I thought she got pushed out of bounds yeah. from our angle, but we don't have much, really a great angle over here. But it's Lady Scotty basketball. It's going to come into green, back to Kirkpatrick, back to green up top. She's going to fire up a three now. It's no good. Rebound goes to Brown for the Lady Colonels. And she's going to bring it across the timeline. 317 left in the quarter. As Brown's going to pull up for a long jumper now. It bounces around and comes out. Rebound goes to Hagen for the Lady Scotties. It's off to Kirkpatrick now. She's got it going up the left sideline. It's over to Green. It's over to Norris in the corner. Norris has it. She is going to get it to Green there at the elbow. It's back out to Kirkpatrick. She'll fire up a three now. It's good. That's an Elmer Realty auction. Three-point shot. Three or four from three-point range for I, Kayla. I was about to say she's three or four on the night for three-point range. It's a 30 to six lead for the Lady Scotties. As Bethel puts up the shot that's no good, rebound goes to Norris for the Lady Scotties. She's going to get it off to Green. 30 to 6 lead for the Lady Scotties. 240 left in the quarter. As Green's got it in the front court. The 2 3 zone for the Lady Colonels. Over to Kirkpatrick. She's going to fire up a long three here. It's off. Rebound goes to Hagen. She goes back up with it. Her shot is good. That's a South Central Bank shot. As Bethel has it now for the Lady Colonels. It's in the middle to Brown. She pulls up for a floater. It's no good. Rebound goes in the hands of Martin. And she goes back up with it and puts it up and in. Actually, that went to Brown. Excuse me, Joe. It looked like it's Martin, but it was not. So it went to Brown. Hagen's got it on the other hand now. She's going to go up the shot. It's no good. And they're going to get her for a charge. It's going to be her second. Team's 11th of the half, fourth of the quarter. Who are they getting, Chase, for the they charge? Got, they got Hagen for the charge. Okay. It's going to be Kleikendall, Austin, 
Slagle. It's going to be Green, Austin, Goodman, Kleikendahl, and Slagle for the Lady Scotties now. It's a 32 to 8 lead, 157 left in, in the quarter. As we got a timeout here to take six seconds off the clock. I guess the clock didn't start on time. That's what it looks like. Anyway, it's going to be Bethel. She gets it into Brown. It's back to Bethel on the left side. Being guarded by Kleikendahl. Bethel gets it over to Maxie. Maxie has it up top now. It's over to Bethel on the right side. It's going to be in the middle to Brown. She puts up a short jumper. It's no good. Rebound is going to go through the hands of two Lady Colonel players there. Number four, Martin, and 13, Maxie. But it's going to stay Lady Colonel basketball. Glasgow last to touch it. It's going to be Bethel throw it in. She's looking to get in. She gets it into Brown. It's going to go off the Lady Scotties there. It was tipped by Ka Green. Yep. She kind of got a hand in there to knock it away. It's going to be Sally to check in for the Lady Colonel. She is going to replace Maxie. No, she's going to replace Martin. 131 left in the half. It's a 32 to 8 lead for the Lady Scotties as Bethel gets it into Brown. Brown has it. She is, has it in the lane. Puts up a floater. It's no good. Rebound goes in the hands of Brown. She gets it back. Rebound now is in the hands of Austin. And Austin loses it now, but she gets it back. She has no, she can't dribble it. It's off to Slagle. Slagle has little time to beat the 10 second call there, but Coach Kelsey Kirkpatrick's going to take a timeout. And we're going to stay right here. It is a full timeout. 116 left until halftime. The 32 to 8 lead for the Lady Scotties. Yeah, Glasgow doing a good job on the board chase. The team, uh, the whole team rebounding well. Uh, everybody but Addie Slagle and Hannah Jolly has a rebound in this ballgame, at least one rebound. So that's good to see the team crashing the boards. Kayla Kirkpatrick shooting it well, three of five from three point range here in the first half. Addie Slagle having a good half. She's shooting the ball well, three of five overall from the field. So. A lot of good things going on for Glasgow with this 32 to 8 lead right well, now. Well, and also Coach Kirkpatrick is playing a lot of people. She's she playing is. everybody. Mm -hmm. Yep, everybody who's dressed has played already. You're right. So she's running them in, in and out tonight. Pretty quick too as well. You would you would like to see Glasgow cut down on the turnovers a little bit. Uh, already nine turnovers here in the first half, but a part of that could be the fact that she is playing so many people. You know, some lineups that haven't played together a whole lot, obviously. So. Right, it's 116 left until halftime. It's a 32 to 8 lead for the Lady Scotties. As it's going to be Kleikendahl, Goodman, Slagle, Green, and Austin for the Lady Scotties. It's going to be Lady Scotty basketball. It's going to come into Green. Green gets it over to Slagle. Back to Green up top, over to Kleikendahl. It's going to be in the corner to Slagle now. Back to Kleikendahl. And they're going to get a three seconds in the lane here on Cynt Cynt Cynthia Austin there, it looks like. It's going to be the 10th Lady Scotty turnover. As Bethel's going to bring it into the front court. Bethel has it. She has it in the corner, picks up her dribble. She has it on the right wing now, guarded by Green. She brings it back out top under a minute left until halftime. Bethel has it on the right side. It's going to be – she was trying to get it there to Corn, but it's going to go off Jordy Goodman. It's going to be Lady Colonel basketball. 50 seconds left until halftime. It comes into Brown, guarded by Austin. Brown has it. She's going to drive down. She pulls up from the elbow. She's going to be fouled, and it goes in. It's her second and one opportunity of the first half here. That foul goes on Cynthia Austin. That's her first team's fifth of the quarter. It's going to send Cadence Brown to the SCRTC free throw, where she is going to shoot one. Her free throw attempt is no good. Rebound is in the hands of Cynthia Austin. She's got it coming the other way with it. She's going to drive all the way down the lane with a nice up and under move. Her shot is no good. Rebound goes to Brown for the Lady Colonels. Cynthia can make some of the nicest moves to get to the basket. A nice little Euro step move right there to get around the defender, but just could not finish. It's 20 seconds left until the half. It's Brown with it up top for the Colonels, guarded by Austin. She's going to drive down on the baseline now. It's going to be tipped out of bounds off of the Lady Colonels. 16 seconds left in the half. It's going to be Bethel to throw it in. Bethel's going to get it in there to middle to Sally. She's going to miss the layup. Rebound's going to be tipped out of bounds. 
off the Lady Colonel. As Slagle's going to get it in to Green. Green's going to pick it up with 12 on the clock. She gets it back to Slagle, back to Green. Green's got it, back to Slagle. Over to Goodman. Goodman's going to fire up a three now. It's no good. Rebound goes to Austin for the Lays guys. She goes back up with it, lays it up and in. That's a South Central Bank shot. And that's going to be the half right here. The Lady Scotties lead 34 to 10 at the half. We'll be back after a five-minute timeout for a Don Franklin halftime show on WCLU Sports. When you come into Garcia's Grill, you're welcomed with a smile and you'll love the atmosphere. Garcia's was voted by the community as the best overall restaurant for the past two years. Great food at a great value. They serve fresh, delicious, traditional Mexican dishes, incredible pasta, burgers, steaks, and seafood. People say you can never get burnt out on this restaurant because of all the amazing choices. Garcia's Grill, owned and operated by the Gomez Garcia family. Check them out on North Ray Street in Glasgow and on Facebook. Garcia's Grill, a different kind of Mexican restaurant. Breaded chicken tender wraps are only $5. Mix and match your favorite flavors like buttermilk ranch, honey mustard, and spicy. Endless combinations start. South Central Bank has been investing in the Glasgow community for over 50 years. During that time, we've learned a thing or two about hard work, relationships, and a vision for success. South Central Bank is designed to make a difference in the prosperity of our customers and the communities it serves. We want to be a part of your success. Visit southcentralbank.com. South Central Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. With a history of scoring touchdowns and breaking records, Dakota Elmore knows a thing or two about hard work. At Elmore Realty and Auction, his team, often referred to as the A-Team, applies that same work ethic in how they serve this community. With a combined 200 years of experience, the team serves our commercial industry, helps families find their dream home, and makes your auction an easy, profitable, and positive experience. Elmore Realty and Auction, trusted since 1935. Check them out on Facebook for listings and auctions. Hardy's two for five dollar breakfast bake goodness into your morning. Choose a biscuit with sausage and egg, biscuit and gravy, or a country fried steak biscuit. Any two, just five dollars. Hardy's goodness in the making. Get exclusive offers on the Hardy's app. Want to slash your cable bill? Save over $20 a month with MyStream TV from SCRTC, the savings alternative with the same great channel lineup you've always been accustomed to. Packages as low as $85 even include internet, at least 200 meg. This is a no-brainer. No more cable boxes, just an app. And you even get an extra stream. Wait till we show you catch-up TV. Compare your current service to the new MyStream TV from SCRTC, 678-2111. Call and save today. Have you injured yourself playing a sport or exercising? Sports medicine experts at TJ Regional Health are trained to get you back on the road to recovery. Whether you're dealing with sprains, fractures, knee and shoulder injuries, or other common injuries, our goal is to prevent illness and injury in active individuals of all ages and help prevent future problems to maximize your performance. Find out more at tjregionalhealth.org slash rehab. Patients first. Team always. TJ Rehabilitation Services. Monticello Bank first opened its doors in 1895 as a single office in Monticello, Kentucky. Today, there are 21 NBC locations across the Commonwealth. From home loans to commercial lending, Monticello Bank offers a wide variety of convenient financial services and competitive rates from local people you know and trust. Visit them at 1434 Happy Valley Road in Glasgow and let them help make the financial side of your life a little easier. Monticello Bank, where people matter. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. We know there's a big difference between being in a community and being part of the community. That's why here in Glasgow, we cheer on the Scotties. We work hard every day to make a positive impact on the community we call home. Behind our golden arches, we strive daily to serve delicious food and treats. If you could only smell this McDonald's ad, you smell how delicious this burger and fries really are. Join our McTeam. To learn how, text KY209 to 38000. Benefits include a sign-on bonus up to $500. Kentucky Farm Bureau agents wear a lot of hats. They're coaches, volunteers, church members, neighbors, someone who's there when you need them, especially when you need them most. That may be a lot of hats, but they're all the perfect fit. 
Kentucky Farm Bureau. Big on commitment. Hey, son, what you doing? Daddy, I'm going to own a dealership one day. All right, I'll dream with you. From one small dream to over 25 dealerships in the state of Kentucky, we have set out to provide Kentuckians with reliable vehicles and the best customer service for over 50 years. This may have started with a simple dream, but our dedication to our customers will go on for generations. It's time for the Don Franklin Auto Halftime Report. We're back at Caverna High School. Chase Landry alongside Joe Myers. It's the Don Franklin Halftime Show with a 34-10 lead for the ladies, guys. Joe's going to get us going with the Garcia's Grill Sizzling Stats. All right, Chase, thank you very much. The Lady Scotties, uh, well, actually, we'll give you the Lady Colonels information first. The uh, Lady Colonels scored two points in the first quarter, eight in the second for their halftime total of 10. 16 first-half turnovers for Caverna. Lady Colonels, uh, just four field goals in the first half. They were four of 24 overall for 17%. They did not make a three. They attempted four of them. And they were two of six in the charity strike for 33%. Had 12 rebounds in that first half, six offensive boards. Just two players have scored so far for Caverna. They're led by Cadence Brown here at halftime, who is four of 15 from the field. She's 0 of 1 from three-point range. And she attempted four free throws but was unable to make any of those. She also leads uh, the Lady Colonels in rebounding here at halftime with six rebounds, two on the offensive end. The other player that has scored for Caverna is Jordan Bethel. She is 0 of 3 from the field overall, 0 of 1 from three-point range. 2 of 2 at the charity stripe for her two points. Also for Caverna, these players did not score, but they did play. Summer Salee is 0 of 3 from the field overall, has two rebounds, both of those on the defensive end. Shea Martin, 0 of 1 from the field. That was a three-point try. She does have two offensive rebounds on the night. Desiree Maxey, 0 of 1 from the field. That was a three-point try. She has one offensive rebound. And also playing but not scoring was uh, Hannah Korn, who was 0 of 1 from the field, and she has one offensive rebound. Garcia's Grill sizzling stats for the Lady Scotties look like this. Lasco scored 16 points in the first quarter, 18 in the second to give them their halftime total of 34. They had 10 turnovers in the first half of play. Glasgow led throughout. Their largest lead in that first half was 26 points. That came at 32 to 6. Lady Scotty shoot 14 of 32 from the field for 44%, 4 of 14 from three-point range for 29%, 2 of 5 at the free throw line for 40%, 19 rebounds for Glasgow, 10 of them on the offensive end. Lady Scotty's led in scoring here at halftime by Kayla Kirkpatrick, who has had a nice night shooting the basketball. She has nine points on three of six shooting. She's three of five from three-point range and had one rebound. Six points for Addie Slagle. She's three of five from the field, 0 of two from three-point range. Six points as well for Cynthia Austin. She's three of five from the field, 0 of one at the charity stripe. She had four rebounds, two on the offensive end. Five points for Carly Hagen, two of two from the field. Carly, one of two at the charity stripe, and she has two rebounds, one on the offensive end. Three points for Ja'Kiley Green. She's one of four from the field overall, 0 of two from three-point range. She was one of two at the charity stripe and had three rebounds, two offensive. Three points as well for Jordy Goodman, who was one of five from the field overall. Those are all three-point tries, and she had two rebounds. Also scoring, Sydney Kuykendall, one of three from the field, all two-point tries, and she did have two offensive rebounds as well. Playing but did not score was Riley Strode. She was 0 of 1 from the field, but she does lead the Lady Scotties uh, with, or at least tied for the team lead with four rebounds on the night for Glasgow. Four, uh, three of those four coming on the offensive glass. And Addison Norris was 0 of 1 from the field, and she had one defensive rebound in the first half. So that is a look at your Garcia's Grill sizzling stats with Glasgow leading the Lady Colonels 34 to 10 here at halftime. Chase. Thank you, Joe. That is our Garcia's Grill sizzling stats. That is our, also our Don Franklin halftime show. We will come back with the HVAC third quarter after a 30-second timeout on WCLU Sports. 
Are you looking for a new career where you'll be a part of a family-owned business for over 50 years? Walbert Trucking is a trucking company based right here in Glasgow. With Walbert Trucking, you'll get full benefits, great pay, and 401k. And you'll be home daily. Unlimited possibilities await you. Apply today and become a member of the Walbert Trucking Team. 106 Sean Lane in Glasgow. 651 6784. Ready? WCLU. We're back at Caverna High School. It's Chase Landrum alongside Joe Myers. We're going to give you a quick rundown with our sponsors so far. We'd like to give a big thank you to Don Franklin, TJ Regional Health, Walbert Trucking, South Central Bank, HVAC Services, Elmore Realty and Auction, SCRTC, Hardy's Hot and Fresh for the play of the game, and Garcia's. We've got the HVAC third quarter. It's a 34-10 lead for the Lady Scotties as... The Lady Scotties will open up with the ball here to begin, or excuse me, to be the Lady Colonel's ball to open up here in the third quarter. It's going to be in girls' action. It's a 13 to 10 lead for the Lady or for the Trojanettes against the Lady Gators tonight at Greenwood as it is Brown with it for the Colonels. She's going to be tied up here by Austin Brown. Has it tried to get it off in the hands of Corn, but it's going to be Brown and Kirkpatrick with it on the floor. It's going to be a jump ball. It's going to go to the Lady Scotties. The Lady Colonels will start the half off with their 17th turnover of the night. It's going to be Kirkpatrick with it. At the end of the first quarter, it's also Cumberland County 20, Allen County 8 in girls basketball action. It's over to Slagle. It's into Austin in the corner. Back out to Green. Green's got his top over to Kirkpatrick. It's a 2-3 zone for the Lady Curls. It's into Austin. Austin loses it but gets it back. Back out to Green. Over to Kirkpatrick. In the corner to Slagle. She fires up a three that's no good. Rebound goes to Corn for the Lady Colonels. As it's off to Brown. Brown's got it in the middle of the lane. She get, tried to get it off in the hands of Salee. It's no good. Green's got it for the Lady Guys. She has got no one to beat. She's going to put it up and in. That's a South Central Bank shot. As Corn for the Lady Colonels is going to hobble off, it's going to be Maxi to check in to replace her. It's a 36 to 10 lead, 7-11 left in the HVAC third quarter. The yeah, Lady Colonels may be starting to get a little fatigued. They've only played six players. Like you said, they've only had seven dressed tonight. It's Brown with it, gets it out top to Bethel. She's being guarded by Green. Gets a screen from Martin. Bethel has it in the corner, picked up by Austin. She brings it out top. Bethel's got it in the circle. It's going to be a screen there by Maxie. It's back to her now. It's over to Brown. She fires up a long jumper. It's no good. Rebound is in the hands of so Sally. The jump shot there by Brown is no good. Rebound to Kayla Kirkpatrick for Lace Guy. Flips it ahead to Austin. Over to Slagle. Puts it up and in. The South Central Bank shot. It's a 38 to 10 lead for the Lady Scotties. As Bethel has it in the front court for the Lady Colonels, picked up by Slagle. It's a 2 3 zone for the Lady Scotties. Bethel has it. She picks up her dribble in the middle to Brown. Brown's going to go on the baseline. She has got it in the corner now, guarded by Kirkpatrick. And it's going to be tipped out of bounds off of Kayla Kirkpatrick. So it's going to say Lady Colonel basketball. It's going to be Bethel throw it in. It's going to come into Brown. It's going to be back to Bethel in the corner, but it's going to be tipped by Kirkpatrick into Bethel's hands as Bethel brings it back out top. It's over to Brown. She pulls up for a long jumper. It's no good. Rebound goes to Sid Cynthia Austin for the Lady Scotties as it goes into Kirkpatrick's hands now. She throws it ahead to Green. Green's got it underneath. She puts it up and in. That's a South Central bank shot. It's a 40 to 10 lead for the Lady Scotties. Five points away from that running clock, Chase. Yes, sir. It is Bethel with it for the Lady Colonels. Off to Brown. She's got it on the right side. It is five or four Lady Scotty players are going to come check in at the next dead ball. As it's going to be in the middle there. It's going to be in the corner, it looks like, to Martin. And it's going to go out of bounds off the Lady Colonels. 
it's going to be Stroh, Norris, Kleikendall, and Goodman for the Lady Scotties. Green, Hagen, Slagle, Kirkpatrick sit down. So Austin's going to be the only Lady Scotties starter to stay on the floor. Somebody's got to take the ball out. It's going to be Austin to take it out. It's going to be Goodman to get it. We had all five players down here on the <laughs> offensive end. As Goodman gets it ahead to Kleikendall. It's going to be inside to Strode. Strode's got it in the lane. Gets it off to Austin. She goes up with a shot that's good. That was a really nice look that time by Riley across the lane there to Cynthia. It's a 42 to 10 lead for the ladies. Guys, 455 left in the HVAC third quarter. As Maxie's got it. She picks up her dribble. She's guarded by Kleikendall. It's over to Bethel. She puts up a long jumper now. It's short. Rebound goes through the hands of two Lady Scotty players, and it's in the hands of Brown in the corner. So she gets the offensive rebound. Brown gets it inside to Salee. It's out to Bethel. Bethel's got it. She puts up a long jumper. It's partially blocked. It's going to go out of bounds off the Lady Colonels. The 42 to 10 lead for the Lady Scotty. It's going to be Goodman to throw it in. Gets it into Austin. It's back to Goodman. It's going to be back to Austin. She brings it across the timeline now. It's in the middle of Strode. Riley's looking to get to Ass North, but it's going to be Austin to pull up for the jumper. It's good. Cynthia is 5 of 7 from the field tonight. Nice jump shot there by Austin. It's a 44 to 10 lead as Bethel hands it off to Brown. Brown's got it just outside the three point line. She brings it back out. Now she gets it back to Bethel. It's going to be over to Salee, into Brown. Brown's got it. Goes up with a fallway floater or jumper. It's no good. Rebound goes to Strode. It's off to Goodman, over to Austin. Austin throws it underneath the Norris. It's going to be a bounce pass there to Kleikendall. She couldn't hold on to it, but it's in the hands of Austin. It's going to be back out to Goodman. It's over to Strode. It's free throw line. Riley's got it now. She gets it out to Austin. Austin's going to put up another jumper. It's no good. Rebound goes to Strode now, and she's going to go back and put it in. It's a 46-10 lead. The running clock will now start. It's off to Brown. She's guarded by Kleikendall. It's a 2-3 zone for the ladies. Guys, this possession as Brown has it up top. Goodman picks her up. It's going to be inside to Salee. She goes up the shot. It's no good. Rebounds off the head of Addison Norris into, into the hands of Riley Strode. She throws it ahead to Kleikendall, who's all alone down here. Now Bethel picks her up. It's going to be off to Austin. Austin's looking here. She's wide open for the three. Doesn't take it. It's in the Norris in the middle. Norris drives down inside, kicks out the Kleikendall, out to Austin. Austin has it in the middle, gets it off Strode, and they're going to get three seconds in the lane on Riley Strode there. So it's going to be a turnover for the Lady Scotties. be the 11th Glasgow turnover, but just the first of the second half. I do like how the Lady Scotties are sharing the ball around tonight, though, trying to get everyone possible a look. Yeah, we're not keep, we don't keep up with assists, but uh, I'd say they've got a several tonight. They've got several tonight. As Bethel has it, gets it off to Brown. 2.35 left in HVAC third quarter. Brown has it in the corner, picked up by Austin. And, and Brown's going to bring it out front. She's going to fall down with it. It's going to be a tip pass into the hands of Kleikendall now. Well, it goes back <laughs> in the hands of Brown, and they're going to get her for a traveling violation. going to be Lady Scotty basketball. I'm not sure how Glasgow was not able to pick that ball up when it was loose from the floor. It just rolled right back to Brown, and then she <laughs> rolled over with the ball, which created the traveling violation. As it's going to come into Kleiken on the backcourt, she's going to bring it across timeline, drive down the middle lane, get it off to Strode. Strode goes up with a shot that's good. That's a South Central Bank shot. Speaking of assists, that would be one for Sydney Kleiken As it's, a, it's another bucket for Riley Strode in this quarter. That's her first, fourth point of the quarter. It's a 48-10 lead for the Lady Scotty as Brown has it. She's got in the corner. She loses it but gets it back at the double team. It's going to be Addison Norris and Brown. It's going to be a tie-up. It's going to go to the Lady Colonels. As it's going to be Corn to check back in for the Lady Colonels, she is going to replace Martin. As Bethel's going to look to throw it in. She tries again. The Brown's going to be stolen by Goodman. It's off to Kleikendall. Kleikendall's got She's going to drive down the lane now, and she is going to lay it up and in. That's a South Central Bank shot. The 50 to 10 lead for the Lady Scotties. One minute left in the HVAC third quarter. It's in the middle of the Browns. It's going to be another steal for Kleikendall. Kleikendall's got it. She gives off to Goodman. Goodman's got it. She's going to go up with it. Misses the layup. Rebound goes to Austin. She's stripped of it, but she's going to be fouled. That foul goes on Bethel. That's her first team's first of the second half. 
Gonna send Cynthia Austin to the SCRTC free throw line where she is gonna shoot two. I think the officials have just decided not to call any fouls unless they're really left with no choice at this point. Glasgow hadn't been called for one in this half yet. As Austin's free throw attempt is no good. Austin's got one more here at the Do SCRTC it. free throw line. Her second attempt is good. The 51-10 game is as it's out into Brown in the front court. It's a 3-2 zone for the Lady Scotties now. As it's gonna be Maxie with it. She can get it back to Bethel. 30 seconds left in HVAC third court. It's off to Maxie. She fires up a three now. It's no good. Rebound goes to Austin for the Lady Scotties, and she's going to the other end. She's gonna drive it all the way to the basket, and she's gonna lay it in. That's a South Central bank shot. Cynthia having one of her better games of the season. The 53-10 lead for the Lays guys. As Bethel throws up the shot, it's no good. It goes to Austin. Austin throws it ahead to Kleikendall now. Sydney puts up a floater in the lane. It's no good. Rebound goes to Strode for the Lady Scotties. And she has it, and it's going to go out of bounds off the Lady Colonels, and that's going to be it for the third quarter. It's a 53-10 lead after three quarters of play. We'll be back with the Walbert Trucking fourth quarter after a 30-second timeout on WCOU Sports. When you come into Garcia's Grill, you're welcomed with a smile and you'll love the atmosphere. Garcia's was voted by the community as the best overall restaurant for the past two years. Great food at a great value. They serve fresh, delicious, traditional Mexican dishes, incredible pasta, burgers, steaks, and seafood. People say you can never get burnt out on this restaurant because of all the amazing choices. Garcia's Grill, owned and operated by the Gomez Garcia family. Check them out on North Ray Street in Glasgow and on Facebook. Garcia's Grill, a different kind of Mexican restaurant. WCLU. We're back here at Caverna High School. It's Chase Landrum alongside Joe Myers. It's a 53 to 10 lead for the Lady Skies after three quarters of play. We've got the Walbert Trucking fourth quarter here very shortly. As the Lady Colonel did not score in that second or in the third quarter, excuse me. As the Lady Skies are playing a playing basically everybody tonight. They have, have on their bench. They've been going. They've been subbing very frequent, frequently as well in this game, as well as Joe is adding up our stats from the third quarter here, as well. It's going to be Jolly Hagen, Green, Kirkpatrick, and Slagle for the Lady Scotties. It's going to be Lady Scotty basketball too. Open up this fourth quarter of play as well. It's the Walbert trucking fourth quarter. As this quarter will go by pretty fast here with it being a running clock here in this fourth quarter. Kirkpatrick gets it in the green. It's back to Kirkpatrick. Back to green up top. Over to Kirkpatrick on the right side. It's going back out top to green. Over to Slagle now. In the Jolly. Jolly's going to put up a short jumper. It's good. That's a South Central bank shot. The 55 to 10 lead for the Lady Skies as Brown's got it. The bench enjoyed seeing Hannah Jolly get a bucket. I was getting ready to say they really enjoyed that bucket. I think that is her first point on the year as well as everybody the Lady Skies put on the floor tonight has now scored except for Addison Norris. They got to get Norris a bucket now as rebound goes to Hagen for the Lady Scotties. As Green's got it. Green gets it over to Kirkpatrick. It's going back out top to Green over to Kirkpatrick. Kayla's going to fire up a three now. It's no good. Rebound goes through the hand of Slagle, and it's going to go to the Lady Colonels. In girls' basketball action, Franklin Simpson leads Butler County after one quarter, 29-1. to one. Franklin's really good. They're and really good. At halftime, Cumberland County leads ACS 32-25 to 25 as Brown's shot is no good. Rebound goes to Brown. Brown goes back up with it, and it's good. That's a south... That's a South Central bank shot for Brown. The 55 to 12 lead for the Lady Scotty. First points for Caverna in this half here in the fourth quarter. As Green's got it, got it, gets it over here to Slagle. Slagle drives down the lane. She's going to lay it up and in. That's a South Central bank shot. The 57 to 12 lead now. 6.25 left in the Walbert Trucking fourth quarter. As Bethel shots no good, rebound goes to Green for the Lady Scotties. As Green's coming up the other way, she's going to take it all the way to the rim, and she is going to be blocked there by Brown, and she's going to get called for a foul. It's going to be her fourth team first of the fourth quarter. 
It's going to be Ja'Kali Green to go to the SCRTC free throw line where she is going to shoot two. The clock does stop on free throws. That's the one thing, those free throws and timeouts, injuries, that's about it. As Green's free throw attempt is good. It's going to be Martin to check in for the Lady Colonel. She is going to replace Corn. As Green's got one more at the SCRTC free throw line. Her shot is good. She goes two of two at the line there the 59-12 lead for the Lady Scotty. Six minutes left in the Warwick Trucking fourth quarter. Bethel has it, gets it off to Brown. She fires up a three now, it's good. That's an Elmo Realty in auction, three point shot. Caden Brown is still the only Lady Colonel who has scored a field goal in the ball game. As Green's got it, she's being guarded by Bethel. It's over to Kirk Patrick. Kayla's gonna bring it back out front now, gets it over to Slagle. Slagle's gonna drive down inside now, and she's gonna, nice move there by Slagle, puts it up and in, that's yes. a South Central bank shot. Addie just gave a little head fake right there, got the defender off her feet and drove right past her to the bucket. It's a 61-15 lead, as four Lady Scotty players will come in at the next dead ball. It's gonna be a steal for the Lady Scotty here. I couldn't tell who got that steal, it's off to Green though. Green's gonna go to the rim and miss the layup. Rebound goes to Salee for the Lady Colonels. Bethel's got it now. She's got in the front court. It's going to be a steal by Green, though. Green's going to go the other end now on Bethel. She puts it up and in. That's a South Central Bank shot. Coach Kelsey Kirkpatrick did take a timeout here, but it's just going to be a substitution timeout. So four Lady Scotty players will check out, and the only person to stay on the floor right here for the Lady Scotty is going to be, I believe it's going to be, Jordy Goodman stays on the floor, I believe, possibly. It is Kleikendall, Stroh, Goodman, Jolly, and Norris for the Lady Scotties. It's a 63 to 15 lead for the Lady Scotties. Brown puts up a jumper on the right side. It's no good. Rebound goes to Strode. Strode throws it ahead to Kleikendall. Kleikendall's got it. She's going to go down the lane. Puts it up and in, and the foul. That's a South Central bank shot as well. That foul goes on Bethel. That's her second team, second of the quarter. That sends Sydney Kleikendall to the SCRTC free throw line where she is going to shoot one. Her free throw attempt is good. Sydney with seven points tonight. It's a 66-15 lead for the Lady Scotties. 4.50 left in the Walbert Trucking fourth quarter. It's a 2-3 zone for the Lady Scotties as Bethel has it. Bethel's got it in the circle for the Lady Colonels. Bethel's going to drive. and She is going to go up the floater. It's good. That's a South Central bank shot off the board. That first, is her first field goal of the night. First player other than Cadence Brown to get a field goal tonight. As Goodman gets a five-second count here. Everybody ran off and left Jordy. She didn't have anybody to inbound the ball to. It's a turnover for the ladies, guys. It'll be the 12. that bucket by Brown is good off the inbounds play right there. It's a South Central bank shot. It's 66 to 19 as Goodman brings it to the front court for the Lady Scotties. Goodman brings it back up top. It's over on the right side to Kleikendall. Back to Goodman. It's going to be in the middle to Jolly. Back out to Strode. Strode is going to get called for a traveling violation. As Greenwood leads Barron County at the half now in girls basketball, 29 to 22. It's a bit a, of a surprise. A 19 to 9 run in that third or in the second quarter. As Bethel's got it for the Lady Colonel, she's going to bring it back out top now. It's back to Brown. Brown's got it. Brown has it on the right side now, guarded by Goodman. Brown's going to bring it back on top. Now she's going to drive down the middle lanes for a Salee jumper there. That's no good. Rebound goes to Kleikendall for the Lady Scotty. She's quickly racing up the sideline now. She's going to go to the rim, and she's going to lay it in. It's a South Central bank shot. It's 68 to 19. Three minutes left in the Walbert Trucking fourth quarter. Sydney's four of six on the night, three rebounds. She's one point away from double figures as Bethel has it for the Lady Colonels. Just under three minutes left now in the Walbert Trucking fourth quarter. She's got in a circle against a 2-3 zone for the Lady Scotties. She hands it off to Brown. It's over to Salee. She's going to fire up a three now. It's in and out. Rebound goes to Jolly for the Lady Scotties. She gets it off to Goodman. Goodman's got it in the front court. She picks up her dribble, gets it off to Strode. She's going to fire up a three now. It's good. Well. <laughs> That's an Elmore Realty auction three-point shot for Riley Strode. It's a 71-19 lead. 
game as Coach Kirkpatrick got a big grin on her face over here after that's, that. That's the first three attempted this season by Riley. <laughs> and probably will be the only three attempted by Riley. As Brown has it, and she is going to get fouled here by Strode. It's going to be her fourth team first of this half, though, as well. And the quarter. It's a 71 19 lead for the Lady Scotties. Just under two minutes left in the Walbert Trucking fourth quarter as Bethel's got it. She's going to get it tapped away from her. It's in the hands of Goodman. Goodman tries to throw it ahead to Kleikendall, but it's going to be a steal for Brown. Brown has it. She's going to throw it in the corner for a three pointer there by Bethel. It's no good. Rebound goes in the hands of Brown. It's going to be stripped out of her hands in the hands of Martin. It's back for a jumper there by by Brown there. 71-21 as Goodman brings it in the front court for Lady Scotty. She drives down the lane, puts up a floater. It's no good. Rebound goes in the hands there. It looks like it went in the hands of Salee. We'll give it to her there. As Bethel's got it with 1.15 left in the quarter. It's 71-21. Lady Scotty's lead as Brown's got it for Lady Kearns. Gets a screen from Bethel. It's going to be over to Maxie. She fires up a three now. It's banked in. 71-24, under a minute to go in the Walbert Trucking fourth quarter. As Goodman's got it in the front court now. It's going to be over to Strode in the middle of the Norris. She goes up with a floater in the lane. All it's right. good. All right. Everyone who has played for the Lady Scotties has scored now. It's a 73-24 game. And that's everybody on the team because everybody that's has right. played. As it's Bethel with 30 seconds left in the Walbert trucking fourth quarter. It's over to Salee. Back to Bethel up top. 73 points is the most Glasgow has scored all year, by the way. As Brown puts up a jumper, it's banked in. That's a South Central bank shot. 73-26 as Goodman has it. She's going to be guarded by Bethel. It gets over to Norris now. Norris has it. Gets over to Strode. It's in the Norris. It's going to be tipped in the hands of Brown. Brown's got it. She's going to go to the other end now, and she is going to miss the shot. Rebound goes to Goodman for the ladies, guys, and she's going to be fouled by Brown, and that's going to end the ball game here. It's a 73-26 win for the ladies, Scotties. Takes them to 4-18 on the year, 0-5 in district. Drops the Lady Colonels to 2-16 on the year, and they were 0-3 in the district. We will come back after... A six-minute timeout with our Don Franklin postgame show and our Garcia's Grill sizzling stats after a six-minute timeout on WCLU Sports. Hardy's two for five dollar breakfast bake goodness into your morning. Choose a biscuit with sausage and egg, biscuit and gravy, or a country fried steak biscuit. Any two, just five dollars. Hardy's goodness in the making. Get exclusive offers on the Hardy's app. With a history of scoring touchdowns and breaking records, Dakota Elmore knows a thing or two about hard work. At Elmore Realty and Auction, his team, often referred to as the A-Team, applies that same work ethic in how they serve this community. With a combined 200 years of experience, the team serves our commercial industry, helps families find their dream home, and makes your auction an easy, profitable, and positive experience. Elmore Realty and Auction, trusted since 1935. Check them out on Facebook for listings and auctions. If you already have internet through SCRTC, there's a pretty good chance your speed just went up, maybe even paying less. And if you don't, check on Fiber Optic with SCRTC in your area because 500 meg is now only 70 bucks. That's 500 down and upload. And if you want more speed, SCRTC got it, up to 5 gig of it. Make the switch right now at SCRTC.com and we'll do the install free. This won't last forever. With unmatched customer support, SCRTC, your best and last Internet provider. Have you injured yourself playing a sport or exercising? Sports medicine experts at TJ Regional Health are trained to get you back on the road to recovery. Whether you're dealing with sprains, fractures, knee and shoulder injuries, or other common injuries, our goal is to prevent illness and injury in active individuals of all ages and help prevent future problems to maximize your performance. Find out more at tjregionalhealth.org slash rehab. Patients first. Team always. TJ Rehabilitation Services. 
Monticello Bank first opened its doors in 1895 as a single office in Monticello, Kentucky. Today, there are 21 NBC locations across the Commonwealth. From home loans to commercial lending, Monticello Bank offers a wide variety of convenient financial services and competitive rates from local people you know and trust. Visit them at 1434 Happy Valley Road in Glasgow and let them help make the financial side of your life a little easier. Monticello Bank, where people matter. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. We know there's a big difference between being in a community and being part of the community. That's why here in Glasgow, we cheer on the Scotties. We work hard every day to make a positive impact on the community we call home. Behind our golden arches, we strive daily to serve delicious food and treats. If you could only smell this McDonald's ad, you'd smell how delicious this burger and fries really are. Join our McTeam. To learn how, text KY209 to 38000. Benefits include a sign-on bonus up to $500. Kentucky Farm Bureau agents wear a lot of hats. They're coaches, volunteers, church members, neighbors, someone who's there when you need them, especially when you need them most. That may be a lot of hats, but they're all the perfect fit. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. Hey, son, what you doing? Daddy, I'm going to own a dealership one day. All right, I'll dream with you. From one small dream to over 25 dealerships in the state of Kentucky, we have set out to provide Kentuckians with reliable vehicles and the best customer service for over 50 years. This may have started with a simple dream, but our dedication to our customers will go on for generations. Are you looking for a new career where you'll be a part of a family-owned business for over 50 years? Walbert Trucking is a trucking company based right here in Glasgow. With Walbert Trucking, you'll get full benefits, great pay, and 401k. And you'll be home daily. Unlimited possibilities await you. Apply today and become a member of the Walbert Trucking Team. 106 Sean Lane in Glasgow, 651-6784. We're not superheroes, but when people need us, we answer the call. We're not weathermen, but we know the Kentucky seasons like the back of our hands. For over 40 years, we've serviced any brand, any time, with a same-day service guarantee. Now that's a big promise, and that's probably why no one else does it. So when dealing with your heating and cooling, call HVAC Services, and you'll have the right team by your side. When you come into Garcia's Grill, you're welcomed with a smile and you'll love the atmosphere. Garcia's was voted by the community as the best overall restaurant for the past two years. Great food at a great value. They serve fresh, delicious, traditional Mexican dishes, incredible pasta, burgers, steaks, and seafood. People say you can never get burnt out on this restaurant because of all the amazing choices. Garcia's Grill, owned and operated by the Gomez Garcia family. Check them out on North Ray Street in Glasgow and on Facebook. Garcia's Grill, a different kind of Mexican restaurant. Hardy's newest handcrafted recipe, candied bacon. Coated with caramelized brown sugar and a hint of pepper to add a whole new level of goodness to breakfast, lunch, dinner, or anytime. Hardy's, goodness in the making. Glasgow Scotty's Basketball on WCLU. Brought to you by Don Franklin Auto, Walbert Trucking, South Central Bank, HVAC Services, South Central Rural Telecommunications Cooperative, Garcia's Grill, Elmore Realty and Auction, Hardee's, TJ Regional Health, McDonald's, Monticello Bank, and Kentucky Farm Bureau Agent Joe Myers. Now, the Don Franklin Auto post-game wrap-up. We are back at Caverna High School. It's Chase Landrum alongside Joe Myers. Lady Scotties win 73 to 26 on the Lady Colonels. That moves them to 4 and 18 on the year. Drops the Lady Colonels to 2 and 16. We got the Don Franklin post game show with their Garcia's Grill sizzling stats. We'll go ahead and let Joe get started with the Garcia's Grill sizzling stats. Joe. All right, Chase. Thank you very much for the Caverna Lady Colonels. They scored two points in the first quarter, eight in the second. None in the third, and 16 in the fourth for their total of 26. They finished the ball game with 25 turnovers on the night. 
Caverna shoots uh, 11 of 47 from the field for 23%. They were 2 of 9 from three-point range for 22%. 2 of 6 at the free throw line, 33%. They had 18 rebounds, half of those, nine of them, came off the offensive glass. They were led in scoring tonight by Cadence Brown, who had 19 points. She was 9 of 26 from the field. She was 1 of 2 from three-point range, 0 of 4 at the free throw line. She also led the team with eight rebounds on the night, four of those coming on the offensive end. Four points for Jordan Bethel. She was 1 of 9 from the field, 0 of 2 from three-point range, 2 of 2 at the free throw line. Three points for Desiree Maxey. She was 1 of 3 from the field. Those were all three-point tries. She had one offensive rebound. Summer Salee did not score. She was 0 of 6 from the field, 0 of 1 from three-point range. She did have five rebounds on the night with one coming on the offensive glass. Shea Martin was 0 of 1 from the field. That was a three-point try. She had two offensive rebounds. And Hannah Korn was 0 of 2 from the field overall. Those were both two-point tries. She had two rebounds, one of them was an offensive board. Caverna with the loss falls to 2-16 and 16 on the season. For the Glasgow Lady Scotties, Glasgow scoring 16 points in the first quarter, 18 in the second, 19 in the third, and 20 in the fourth for a season-high 73 points scored here tonight against the Lady Colonels. Glasgow turns the ball over 15 times. Glasgow shooting 31 of 57 from the field overall for 54%. They were 5 of 17 at the three-point stripe for 29%. 6 of 9 at the charity stripe for 67%. 34 rebounds, 13 of those on the offensive glass. Lady Scotties get three players in double figures tonight and then two others with nine points. Glasgow led in scoring by Cynthia Austin. Cynthia had 13 big points tonight. She also led the Lady Scotties, who actually was second on the team in rebounds tonight with eight rebounds. She had three offensive rebounds. Cynthia was six of ten from the field and one of two from the free throw line. Also for Glasgow tonight, uh, it was Addie Slagle with 12 points. She was six of nine from the field, 0 of three from three-point range. 11 points for Ja'Kylie Green. She was 4 of 8 from the field, 0 of 2 from 3-point range, 3 of 4 at the charity stripe. She had 4 rebounds, 2 of them on the offensive end. 9 points for Kayla Kirkpatrick. She was 3 of 7 overall, 3 of 6 from 3-point range. She had 2 rebounds both on the defensive end. 9 rebounds, excuse me, 9 points as well for Sydney Kuykendall. Sydney 4 of 6 from the field. She was 1 of 1 at the charity stripe, and she had 3 rebounds, 2 offensive. Seven points for Riley Strode. She was three of five from the field, one of one from three-point range, and she led the team with nine big rebounds tonight, five of them on the offensive glass. Five points for Carly Hagen. She was two of two from the field, one of two at the free throw line. She had three rebounds, one offensive. Three points for Jordy Goodman. Jordy was one of seven from the field. She was one of five from three-point range, and she had three defensive rebounds on the night. Two points for Addison Norris. She was one of two from the field and had one rebound and two points as well for Hannah Jolly. She was one of one from the field. She also had one rebound. Everybody for Glasgow scored at least two points tonight and almost everybody had at least one rebound. Addie Slagle did not get a rebound on the night, but she uh, was second on the team in scoring with 12 points. The Lady Scotties uh, with the victory will go to 4-18 and 18 on the year and break that nine-game skid in the losing column. Chase? Thank you, Joe. We're going to go ahead and get Coach Kelsey Kirkpatrick on here for our Don Franklin interview here in our post-game show as Coach Kirkpatrick puts the headset on now. All right, Coach, it's a 73-26 to 26 win tonight. It's been a little bit. Everybody that played tonight that you had on roster scored. Yeah. And you played, and you got to play a lot of people as well, though, which is always good as well. You were rotating them in and out all night long. Getting everybody some looks out there tonight. Uh, yeah, we, we talked to before before the game uh, about creating bad habits. You know, I, sometimes you look at teams' record, you look at team schedules, and you're like, oh, this is, this is an easy win. Like, it's not like that. And the girls have to understand that. I know we're young, but they, they have to know they have to come out and compete every night. Um, we, we, we started off sluggish against, like, Russellville earlier in the season, but tonight I, th I think they, they stepped up to the occasion. Yeah, we made some mistakes tonight, and that, that's normal. You know, I, I expect mistakes from a young group, but 
they they were able to overcome some things and they looked they looked ahead in transition which is what we've been asking for all year it's not me ball pushing from one side of the court to the other they're 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 starting to see each other so i, I was very very proud of them i thought they were very unselfish with yeah. the basketball tonight compared to recent games we may have seen more unselfish with the basketball getting people more looks more assists we don't keep up with assists but there was a bunch of assists out there i thought the balance of your scoring tonight was really good nobody had more than 13 points everybody was in between 13 and seven you got everybody in the scoring book tonight which i think it's good to spread of scoring around as well yeah um that we we just had that conversation after the game too um when you go on khsaa or when when you look at the scorebook, the most important stats aren't listed. Um, you know, you got assists, you got steals, you got you got the rebounds are on there, obviously, but you got the things that lead up to the points. And once once we figure it out that your assist is basically your points too, like it's going to be easier for the girls. I agree, Coach. Thank you for coming out tonight. Congrats on the win. We will see you back in Scotty Gym on Thursday night against Clinton County. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. That is Coach Kelsey Kirkpatrick after a 73-26 victory. Takes the Lady Scotties to 4-18 on the year. That is going to conclude our Don Franklin postgame show for the girls. We will come back after a one-minute timeout. We will begin our Don Franklin pregame show on the boys' side after a one-minute timeout on WCLU Sports. South Central Bank has been investing in the Glasgow community for over 50 years. During that time, we've learned a thing or two about hard work, relationships, and a vision for success. South Central Bank is designed to make a difference in the prosperity of our customers and the communities it serves. We want to be a part of your success. Visit southcentralbank.com. South Central Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. With a history of scoring touchdowns and breaking records, Dakota Elmore knows a thing or two about hard work. At Elmore Realty and Auction, his team, often referred to as the A-Team, applies that same work ethic in how they serve this community. With a combined 200 years of experience, the team serves our commercial industry, helps families find their dream home, and makes your auction an easy, profitable, and positive experience. Elmore Realty and Auction, trusted since 1935. Check them out on Facebook for listings and auctions. W-C-L-U. We're back here at Caverna High School. It's Chase Landrum alongside Joe Myers. We've got the Don Franklin pregame show on the boys' side now as we've got about nine minutes before tip-off here at Caverna High School. We've got the Colonels and we've got the We've got the Colonels and the Scotties here in a kind of a big matchup here that we it's kind of underrated night. The Colonels come in at 12 and 7 on the year they are 2 and 2 in the district they are coming off a heartbreak loss to washington county last night 57 to 55 on a tip-in basket at the end of the fourth quarter that gave washington county the win the scotties though joe are coming off a big district win against barron county on friday night 58 to 43 and scotty jim and just a route of the trojans that the league got as high as 21 in that ball game the scotties looked like just I guess you watched him play against the Dare County, I believe you were with me. It was kind of like that ball game, just complete dominance from the beginning of that ball game. Yeah, the, the Dare County game, maybe up until the Barron County game, was the best I think the Glasgow boys have played all year long. And I didn't get a chance to watch the entire Barron County game. I was not there that night. I did watch off and on a little bit online. Um, and, you know, the Scotties, I thought, played great from what I, what I saw. Uh, you know, Barron County is a team who shoots a ton of threes. Uh, and, and when those threes are going down for Barron, they're a very good basketball team. But when they're not going down, they're kind of just an average team. And the Scotties caught them on a night when uh, Barron County was not making a three. I think they made like five of 23, if I remember correctly. They were I think that's what five you all of said. 23. Yes, five of 23 thought, in that ball I game. I thought I remembered that number. Uh, but it wasn't just because Barron County was not making threes. I think Glasgow did a good job of getting out there and guarding the three-point line. Uh, but the Scotties played played really well. There was a point in that, in that second half, I think, early fourth quarter, maybe it was, maybe it was late third quarter. Glasgow had a big lead, and Barron County started to come back on them a little bit. I think got it down to as close as maybe 12 or 11 points. Uh, and, you know, there have been times when, when the boys 
might not have withstood that, but, but Glasgow's boys did a good job. They, they held their ground and pushed that lead back out. They stopped the, the momentum that Barron County had built and pushed that lead back out to make it a comfortable win for them. Yeah, and that's a good confidence builder because they have not been able to do that in recent games. We'll say once they get down, they kind of just – it's been an early game getting down. Like they don't start out very good and they're down 8 to 10 points within the first few minutes of the ball game, and it's hard to come out of that deficit. I've got a score update real fast. Okay. The lady – the Trojanettes have retook the lead after three quarters. It's 41 to 35 after three quarters at Greenwood tonight. Of not, course, the not, Gators not, and the Trojans will be playing after that ball not game. Not sure as what well. happened in the second quarter of that girls' game, but uh, yeah, you say I think you said Greenwood outscored them 19-9 in that second quarter. But I, I would not be surprised at all to see Barron County up walking away with that one. Trojanettes uh, got a good basketball team, of course. Yeah, we're looking at this Caverna Colonels team here that are 12 and seven on the year, two and two in the district and a very tough district. They have lost both of their district games by one point. They've lost to Hart County by a point, and they lost, I believe, it was to somebody else by a point too in the district. I believe is what I was looking at the other night. They lost. I take it back. They lost to Green County by 10. It was 65 to 55 in that ball game. That was at. Oh, it was actually here they lost to Green County. So that's a good win by Green County on the road in this gym. It's very hard to play in this gym. The Scotties, though, lost this matchup at home last year. I had this wrote down, but I don't know where I put it. They lost this matchup last year at home, 55-47 to against the Colonels in Scotty Gym. Glasgow, though, has won three of the last four matchups against the Colonels. Yeah, Colonels. and if you look back to 2015, this has been a good series between Glasgow and Caverna Chase. Uh, the teams are 4-4 four and four in those eight meetings since 2015, so it's been a very competitive matchup. It's always a fun matchup for the community. You know, it's two smaller independent school systems. Now, granted, Glasgow's quite a bit larger than Caverna. Caverna is one of the smallest independent districts in the entire state. But you know, I think I think the community enjoys that fact that you know a lot of these kids know each other. They've grown up playing basketball with each other throughout their lives. The parents and the fans on each side know each other, so it makes this a fun match between Glasgow and Caverna usually. I agree, Joe. When I'm looking at stats here for Caverna, they've got three scores over ten points a game, led by Jalen Crane, who averages just over twenty points a ball game. Also averaging more than 15 is Tyson Martin. He averages 15. And then Desmond Rowett, he averages 10. So you got three Colonel players there averaging over 10 points a game. They score about 37 points a game between those three, and they average 67 points. So they score just about or over their average for the team. And then they've, they've got Russell Williams, who averages 9.4 games. So, I mean, he's just – he's might, you might as well say he's averaging double figures as well. So really almost four kids averaging double figures. I'm looking forward to watching the Crane Kid play. I've heard a lot about him. I have not seen him play in person, so it'll be my first chance to, to kind of see what his game looks like. I'm looking forward to watching him play. But, yeah, Caverna scores 68 points a game. You compare that with Glasgow, they score about 60 a game. So, And we know how much Glasgow likes to get up and down the floor and play at a fast pace. So I'd say we're going to have a track meet on our hands tonight between these two teams, Jay. I'd agree, Joe. The Colonels do shoot 48% from the field overall. They shoot 34% from the three, 64% from the line. They also get 27 rebounds a game. The Scotties, though, they, they are led by John Carter Walbert and Jarek Martin, who both average 16 points, and Martin averages 11 points. Jeremiah Driver averages eight, and JoJo Driver also averages about eight points a game. So those four players for the Scotties tonight have been very key. The Scotties are coming off for points against Barron County, where Walbert and Martin had a combined 30 points for them, 15 points apiece from Walbert and Martin. And then JoJo Driver had 10 big points in that game as well. But I thought the player that the Scotties, the underrated player of the Scotties in that game was Jalen Bradley, who had seven points coming off the bench in that game for the Scotties. Yeah, I know. That was one of the players you talked to Coach Buford about after the ball game, and he was real pleased with how how Bradley played as well. He's I mean, he's just a freshman, right? He's so, just a freshman. Uh, really good to see a, a freshman step up and play that way in a packed gym uh, against your crosstown rival. Uh, no nerves, obviously, on Bradley's part. Did a great job. Jarek Martin, I think, had a double-double in that game. Isn't that right, Chase? He had 15 uh, and 10. 15. I knew he had 10 rebounds. I couldn't remember exactly how many points he had. But, uh, you know, Jarek, we've talked about the potential that Jarek has, and, and you see flashes of it sometimes. It's just not as consistent as we'd like it to be. So hopefully maybe down the stretch here, that'll get Jarek going, that double-double against Barron County. He can keep that going the rest of the season. I'm not going to jinx it here, Joe, but I think this is the first time all year 
that the Scotties have got everybody that's healthy dressed out on the bench tonight. As Canyon Allen was out the other night, he is back tonight, I believe, as well. He's out there. I see him out there warming up. So Scotty's got everybody available for them tonight as well, which is a, another key thing for the Scotties as yeah, well. Very good news. Uh, obviously, the district tournament's coming up here in just what three weeks or so. So I mean, you want to you want to go into that full strength. You hope going down the final few weeks of the uh, season here that you can keep everybody healthy. So certainly good to see that tonight. Yes, we are going to come back after a 30-second timeout here. We'll come back with the TJ Regional Health starting lineup. We'll come back after a 30-second timeout on WCOU Sports. We're not superheroes, but when people need us, we answer the call. We're not weathermen, but we know the Kentucky seasons like the back of our hands. For over 40 years, we've serviced any brand, any time, with a same-day service guarantee. Now that's a big promise, and that's probably why no one else does it. So when dealing with your heating and cooling, call HVAC Services, and you'll have the right team by your side. WCLU. We're back at Caverna High School. It's Chase Landrum alongside Joe Myers. We got about a minute and 30 seconds before tip-off here at Caverna. We're going to give you the TJ Regional Health starting lineups first for the Colonels. They're going to start guard Jalen Crane. He's a sophomore. Also starting guard will be Desmond Rowett. He's a senior. Starting at guard will be Bo Barker. He's a senior. Also starting at forwards will be Tyson Martin. He's a sophomore. And also starting at the other forwards going to be Kenyon Martin. He's a sophomore head coach of the Colonels is Steve Barker. They are 12 and 7 on the season. Your starters for the for the Scotties now are going to be John Carter Walbert. He's a senior. Also starting guard is going to be Jarek Martin. He's a sophomore. Starting at the other guard is going to be JoJo Driver. He's a junior. Starting forward is going to be Jeremiah Driver. He's a junior. And starting forward is going to be Landon Mitten. He's a sophomore. Head coach of the lady, or excuse me, the Scotties is William Buford in his second season. They are 6 and 10, 2 and 3 in the district. That is your TJ Regional Health starting lineup. We will go ahead and take our 30-second timeout here, and we will bring you the Walbert trucking tip-off. That will do it for our Don Franklin pregame show for the boys. We'll be back after a 30-second timeout on WCLU Sports. South Central Bank has been investing in the Glasgow community for over 50 years. During that time, we've learned a thing or two about hard work, relationships, and a vision for success. South Central Bank is designed to make a difference in the prosperity of our customers and the communities it serves. We want to be a part of your success. Visit southcentralbank.com. South Central Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. WCLU. We're back here at Carolina High School. It's Chase Langham alongside Joe Myers. And it's going to be Jalen Crane here in the circle. He's getting a getting a ball for scoring his 1,000th point as a Caverna Colonel as a sophomore. Yeah, that's pretty impressive to, <laughs> to get to 1,000 points as a sophomore. I think he said it occurred back on January the 5th. So this kid's got a bright future, obviously. I believe he's got some good offer, or offers so far. Maybe D1, D2 is what I've seen. I thought I might have seen one from Jacksonville State maybe a month ago. I could yeah. be wrong. I can't speak to that, Chase. I have no idea. But I wouldn't be surprised. What's our three keys to the game tonight, Joe? You've seen the Scotties play some this year. Well, Stretch, you were with me for three or four weeks. What's the three keys for the Scotties tonight? Well, number one, I mean, is to me, get off to a good start. You know, this, this team, as we were talking about earlier, sometimes does not get off to great starts in ball games. So get off to a quick start tonight. Don't play from behind. You know, obviously, I think you're going to have to. We just spoke about Jalen Crane. I think defensively, you got to try to keep him down as much as possible. I don't, you know, you're not going to shut a kid like that down, but you can hold him maybe six, seven points under his average, you know, keep him to 13, 14 points a game. That's probably going to help you have a pretty good chance to win this ball game. Uh, and, uh, you know, I would like to see. And like you said, Jarek Martin continue that momentum that he built against Barron County with that double-double. Yeah, I agree, Joe. It's like Coach Buford has said before. He doesn't know which Scotty team's going to show up night to night. He's like calling it Dr. Jacklin, Mr. Yeah, and that's, that's not good when you're a head coach. <laughs> you you need to know, you know, you, you need to be comfortable in, in what your team is going to give you every night, what each player on your team is going to give you every night. 
Otherwise, it makes it difficult to coach them. I think tonight, if you're the Scotties, you've got to get off to a fast start against this Colonel team. Because I'm going to say both these teams are going to run down the floor like it's a track meet on both ends of the floor. Yeah, it'll be up and down. I don't think there's any doubt about that. I'm, I'm going to have a hard time keeping up with the stats. <laughs> I, I might not be able to look up and watch this game much. I'm probably just going to be listening to you call the, call now, the rebounds gonna, and the shots. I'm going to say this, Joe. I think the Scotty faithful has come out tonight. I think we've got more fans than the Colonels here tonight as I've turned around and looked behind us. The Scotty have brought a lot of Glasgow here tonight. Yeah, I noticed that too. Uh, I mean, but Caverna has a bunch of people here as well. This gym is, I'm not going to say it's Packed to the, it's only, not, it's yeah. not completely no. packed, but I mean, there are not very many empty seats in here. There's a lot of people in here to watch this ball game. Yeah, the Colonels are starting, it looks like, three guards and two forwards, the same as the Scotties, though. They're going to start three guards and two forwards as well. This Colonel team, though, is really young. They're starting sophomore, sophomore, senior, sophomore, senior. Two seniors and three sophomores starting for the Colonels tonight. There was a player for the Colonels that went down during warm-ups. We could not tell who that possibly was during the warm-ups. We got the Walbert Trucking tip-off, sir. We got the Walbert Trucking tip-off now. It's going to be Tyson Martin for the Colonels. Going to go up against Jarek Martin. For the Scotties, it's going to be the Colonels and the Scotties. Martin and Mark, excuse me, it's Martin and Martin in a circle here. And the tip is off, and it's going to be won by the Colonels. It's going to go right into Jalen Crane's hands, and we're off and away. Crane's going to bring it up against this Scotty man-to-man -man defense. It's going to be guarded by JoJo Driver. Crane's got it. He's looking to drive. He pulls up with a jump start right in front of us. No good. Rebound goes to Jarrett Martin for the Scotty. He's pushing the pace. It's quickly up to JoJo Driver, but he throws it out of bounds. It's going to be Colonel basketball. I like the aggressiveness, though, to begin for the Scotty. He's trying to get it, a, get it ahead. It's going to be Crane with it for the Colonels against JoJo Driver. Crane's got it in the front court now. He's going to get it off here to Kenyon Martin. It's going to be inside there to Tyson Martin, and it's going to be a goal tend on the Scotties. And Tyson Martin's going to get the bucket. It's a 2-0 lead for the Colonels. Yeah, Jarek Martin went up and got the block, but it definitely was a goal tend. It's going to be a 2-2-1 press here for the Colonels. It's in the Walbert. Walbert's got it. He's going to throw it ahead to Jeremiah Driver, who loses it, but he's trapped here in half court. Gets it back to Walbert. Walbert's got it now. He's going to bring it out in the front court. 2-0 lead for the Colonels as Walbert's picked up by Crane. Walbert's got it out top over to JoJo Driver. He is guarded by Rowley. It's in to Martin. Martin's got it. He's going to go inside with it. Pulls up with a fadeaway floater. It's no good. Rebound goes to Kenyon Martin for the Colonels. It's in the hands of Crane. Crane's got it. Crane goes down the lane. He puts up a floater there. It's no good. Rebound's going to be tipped out in the hands of Landon Mitten. Mitten's got it. Gets it off JoJo Driver. Off to Walbert. Walbert has it in the front court for the Scotties. 6.46 left in the first quarter. Walbert gets it over to JoJo Driver on the right side. He has it. Brings it back out top. He's looking for somebody. Gets it off to Martin in the corner. He is guarded by Kenyon Martin. Martin gets it out to Mitten. Mitten gets it inside to Jeremiah Driver. He faces up. He's got it inside. Spin move in the lane. He goes up a shot. It's blocked there by Tyson Martin as Crane comes the other way with it for the Colonels. He's going to go up to the rim and lays it up and in. That's a South Central bank shot. It's a 4 0 lead for the Colonels as Walbert's got it for the Scotties. He's going to be trapped in the backcourt. He picks up his dribble. He loses. It's going to be in the front court to Martin. Martin's got it now. He throws it into Mitten. Mitten's going to put up a short jumper. It's an air ball. Rebound goes to Barker for the Colonels. It's quickly in the hands of Crane. Crane's got it. He's going to drive down the middle of the lane. He kicks it out underneath for a slam there by Tyson Martin. It's a 6-0 lead for the Colonels. As it comes in to Walbert, over to JoJo Driver. He throws it ahead to Martin. Martin's got it. He's going down the lane. Puts it up and in at the South Central Bank shot and the foul. That foul goes on Barker. That's his first team first. Sends Jarek Martin to the SCRTC free throw line where he's going to shoot one. Yeah, Jarek faked the behind-the-back pass that time before he took it up and went up and drew the contact and knocked the bucket down. It's a 6-0 start for the Colonels as Martin gets that bucket. It's 6-3 now as Martin's free throw is good. It's a 6-3 lead for the Colonels. And it's going to be Crane bringing it to the front court for the Colonels. He's going to be guarded by JoJo Driver. Crane's going to get it off in the hands of Desmond Rout. He's going to drive down inside on Walbert. He's going to flip up a shot that comes in and out. Rebound goes to Jeremiah Driver. He's going to bring it up the floor for this guy. It's over to Walbert. Walbert has it on Crane. 
Walbert looking to drive. It's going to get stripped out of his hands by Crane. It's in the hands of Kenyon Martin as Crane's got it for the Colonels. It's going to be a nice pass there by Crane for a slam by Tyson Martin again. He's got six to eight Colonel points. It's an 8-3 lead for the Colonels. It's in to Walbert. He's going to get trapped here in the backcourt. It's going to be headed to Jeremiah Driver. Back to Walbert. Walbert throws it ahead to Martin. He's got it in the corner. He's going to shoot a three-pointer now. That's short. Rebounds in the hands of Jeremiah Driver. He has it underneath. Back to Martin. Martin's got it in the lane. He tried to get the mitten, but he's going to be fouled. That foul goes on Tyson Martin. That's his first team second of the quarter. It's going to be Scotty basketball underneath. It's going to be Martin to throw it in. Martin's looking to get it in. He gets it in to JoJo Driver in the corner. He has, he has it in the corner. He almost loses it, but he brings it back out top to Jeremiah Driver. It's off to Walbert. 448 left in the opening quarter. It's an 8-3 lead for the Colonels. As Walbert has it guarded by Crane. Walbert's looking to drive. He's cut off by Crane. It's over to Jeremiah Driver. He's looking to get off to JoJo Driver. He does. He'll shoot a three at the top of the key. It's no good. Rebound goes to Tyson Martin for the Colonels. It's in Crane's hands now. Crane's got it. He has it in the front court. He's going to pull it back out. It's going to be over to Barker. Barker's going to get it out in the hands of Rowlett. It's back to Crane. Crane's got it, and they're going to get him for a travel. It's going to be the first Colonel turnover of the game. As the Colonels will bring a 2-2-1 pressure here off the dead ball. Just as we suspected, Chase, up and down the court. Surprised it's not even faster than what it really is right now. As Martin's got it, he's looking to throw it and gets it into JoJo Driver. It's a trap here at half court. JoJo picks up his dribble. It's a steal there by Tyson Martin. It's in the hands of Crane. Crane's going to pull up for a three, a step back three. It's no good. Rebound is in Tyson Martin's hands. He goes back up with it and puts it in. He's got eight of the ten points for the Colonels. It's a 10-3 lead. Quickly up in the front court to Jeremiah Driver in the corner. He is trapped. It's going to be trapped in the corner. It's going to be out to Walbert. Walbert secures it. He's got it on the baseline. In the mitten, it's going to be a steal there by Rowlett. Rowlett's got it coming the other way now. Rowlett has it. It's going to be over to Crane. Crane's going to drive down the lane now, maybe. He has it free throw line. He pulls up for a free throw line. Jump shot that's good. Coach William Bucher is going to take a timeout. It's a 12-3 lead for the Colonels. We'll be back after a 30-second timeout on WCLU Sports. Want to slash your cable bill? Save over $20 a month with MyStream TV from SCRTC, the savings alternative with the same great channel lineup you've always been accustomed to. Packages as low as $85 even include Internet, at least 200 meg. This is a no-brainer. No more cable boxes, just an app. And you even get an extra stream. Wait till we show you catch-up TV. Compare your current service to the new MyStream TV from SCRTC, 678-2111. Call and save today. WCLU. We're back at Savannah High School. It's Chase Landrum alongside Joe Myers. We got a HBAC Services instant replay. It's going to be the Tyson Martin dunk here that gives the Colonels a 12 to 3 lead. 3.37 left in the opening quarter. As the ball comes into Walbert for the sky, he's a 2 2 1 press. It comes ahead to JoJo Driver, but there's going to be a foul here on Russell Williams, who just checked into the ball game for the Colonels. That's going to be his first team's third of the quarter. It's going to be Scotty basketball. JoJo Driver looks to get it in for the Scotties. He throws it in the backcourt straight in the hands of Crane. Crane's got it underneath. He fall away jump shot's no good. Rebound goes to Williams. Back out to Crane. In the corner. Back to Crane now. Crane's guarded by JoJo Driver. It's going to be try to get inside to Martin, but it's going to be stolen by Jarrett Martin. As Martin's going to bring it up the court for the Scotties. He's going to drive down the lane. It's out to Jeremiah Driver. It's through his hands. It's going to be saved inbounds to Tyson Martin. A turnover for the Scotties. Scotties have seven turnovers. As Crane quickly the other way, it goes to the rim. It's going to be no good. Rebound goes to Jarrett Martin for the Scotties. Quickly ahead to Walbert. Walbert's got it. He drives down the lane. Now, pump fake, still the shot. It's no good. Block is in the hands of Tyson Martin. Outlet goes to Rallet. Rallet's going to go to the rim. Pump fakes on Martin on two Scotty defenders. Goes up and puts it in. It's a 14 3 lead. As the Scotties are going to turn the ball over here again, I believe, but they're going to get a foul here. On the Scotties. It's going to go on JoJo Driver, I believe. No. No, they're going to get the foul on Caverna here. It's going to go on Tyson Martin. That's going to be his second. Team fourth of the quarter as Nunley checks in for the Scotties. He's going to replace Jeremiah Driver. Also, it's going to be Cretavian Maxey check in 
for the Colonels. He's going to replace Martin, who just picked up his second foul. Chase Glasgow has to calm down. They are playing way out of control. As it's going to come into Nunley. He almost stepped over the mid-court line here. It's Walbert with it now. He's being guarded by Crane. And it's going to be a no. It meant lucky to get that ball. He's going to fire up a three now. It's no good. Rebound goes to Nunley for this guy. He's got length. And he gets it off to Martin inside. He goes back up with it. His shot's no good. Rebound's going to be tipped around in the hands of Maxi. He brings it all the way in the front court. It's a 14 3 lead. And they're going to get Maxi for a double dribble. Third Caverna turnover. Scotty's got to slow down here. Seven, seven turnovers for Glasgow, Chase. We're not even six minutes into this ball game. As this Caverna pressure has just gave the Scotty fits so far. As it comes into Walbert, who looks gassed, honestly with this pressure that the Colonels have brought. As Walbert has it up top, guarded by Crane. Walbert has it, gets off to Nunley. Nunley's going to drive down the lane, kicks out to JoJo Driver. He drives now, pulls up for a jumper. It's no good. Rebound goes in the hands of Kenyon Martin for the Colonels. It's in Crane's hands now. Crane's got it. It's in the corner to Maxi. Back out to Crane. Crane's being guarded by Martin now. Crane's going to bring it back out top. It's a 14-3 lead, and they're going to get a foul here inside on Maxi. That's going to be his first team's fifth of the quarter. That was away from the basketball. Him and JoJo Driver were down inside fighting for position, and they thought uh, Maxi got a little too aggressive there, apparently. That's the fifth team foul of the quarter for the Colonels. The Scotties don't have a foul in this opening quarter. They do not. It's a 2-2-1 two -two press again for the Colonels. It's Martin to throw it in. He's looking again. It comes into JoJo Driver. Back to Martin. Martin throws it off to Nunley. Nice job there by the Scotties. Nunley goes up with a shot that's no good. Rebound goes to Kenyon Martin. It's quickly ahead in the hands of Williams, and they're going to get him for a traveling violation. It's a 14-3 lead for the Colonels, a 2-2-1 press. As Martin's looking to get it in, he gets it into Nunley. Nunley, has, he's going to be trapped here in front of us. Quickly over to JoJo Driver. He's got it. He throws it. In the corner to Nunley now, and it's going to go out of bounds off the Scotties. If Glasgow does not quit turning the ball over, Chase, they're not going to have any chance to even stay close in this ball game. It's Eight gonna be, turnovers yeah. with a minute 26 to go in the first quarter. It's going to be into Crane. Crane's going to bring it across the timeline for the Colonels. It's quickly going to be out front to Kenyon Martins. Back over to Crane, guarded by JoJo Driver. He's going to drive baseline now. Goes around JoJo Driver. His shot's no good. Put back is good there by Williams. The 16-3 lead. It's a steal by the Colonels, though. It's going to be Desmond Rowlett with it. It's going to be Crane down the lane now, and they're going to get him for a – they're going to get a foul on JoJo Driver. Foul goes on Driver. That's his first team first of the game. It's going to be Jalen Crane to go to the SCRTC free throw line where he's going to shoot two. That is the tenth, I believe it is. Ninth turnover for the Scotties in the first quarter there. And Crane's first free throw is good. Jalen Bradley, Jeremiah Driver check in for this guy. Mitten's going to go sit. And also it's going to be JoJo Driver going to sit down as well. The 17 to 3 lead for the Colonels. As Crane's second free throw is good as well. Make it 18 to 3, a 15 point lead for the Colonels. As it's going to be another steal here for the Colonels, but they're going to get. Williams from stepping on the sideline here would have been the Scotty's 10th turnover of the quarter. 56 seconds left here in the first quarter. It's 18 to three, Colonels. As Walbert comes in front court to a trap, it's over to Martin. It's gonna be in the middle of Jeremiah Driver in the corner, Bradley. He's gonna fire up a three now, it's gonna be short. Rebound goes in the hands of Maxi. Quickly in the hands of Crane. He quickly comes into the front court with it. Crane has it. He's going to pull up for a three now. It's going to be short. Rebound goes to Williams. He's going to go back up with it, and he is going to be fouled. That foul goes on Nunley. It's his first team second of the quarter. It's going to be Maxi to throw it in underneath. Maxi's looking to get it in. He gets it in out top of the crane with 30 seconds left. It's in the corner. Back to Maxi. He puts up a three. It's no good. Rebound goes to Jarrett Martin for the Scotty. Quickly ahead to Walbert. Walbert's got it. He's going in the lane now. He loses it. Gets it back. Walbert has it. He goes up with the shot. It's no good. Rebound is in the hands. Goes out on goes out on the Colonels, though, as the Colonels couldn't get the rebound there. It's an 18-3 lead for the Colonels, though. 
20 seconds left in the opening quarter as Martin's going to throw it in for the Scotties. It's going to come in to Nunley. He's got it in the left corner. He's guarded by Williams. He goes around him to the rim. It's going to be blocked there by Maxey. It's in the hands of Williams off the crane. Ten seconds left in the quarter. Crane's got it. He's going to drive down the middle lane. Kicks it in the corner for a Maxey three. Now it's no good. Rebound goes to Jarrett Martin. He quickly is wanting to push the base. He's got it going down the floor. He's going to pull up for a three now. It's off. The Colonels lead 18-3 after one quarter of play. We'll be back after a 30-second timeout on WCLU Sports. Have you injured yourself playing a sport or exercising? Sports medicine experts at TJ Regional Health are trained to get you back on the road to recovery. Whether you're dealing with sprains, fractures, knee and shoulder injuries, or other common injuries, our goal is to prevent illness and injury in active individuals of all ages and help prevent future problems to maximize your performance. Find out more at tjregionalhealth.org slash rehab. Patients first. Team always. TJ Rehabilitation Services. High School Sports is on. Ready? WCLU. We're back at Caverna High School. Chase Landrum alongside Joe Myers. The Caverna leads 18-3 to after one quarter of play here. Scotty's having turnover issues tonight. They had nine first quarter turnovers. Ten. Ten, excuse me. We hit ten there at the end of the first quarter. Ten first quarter turnovers. As we could hear Coach Buford over here in the Glasgow huddle, he was not very pleased. Not much to be pleased about if you're William Buford. His team was 1 of 15 from the field in that first quarter, 0 of 5 from three-point range with 10 turnovers, 1 of 1 at the foul line, 8 rebounds. It's going to be Scotty's ball to open up the quarter of play. Caverna, real quick, Chase was 8 of 18 overall, 0 of 4 from three-point range, 2 of 2 at the foul line, 11 rebounds. They had four turnovers. Scotty's lucky that Caverna didn't make a three in that quarter either because they had some decent looks. They could have pushed this lead out even further. It's an 18-3 lead, though, for the Colonels as it's going to come in to Jarrett Martin for the Scotties, who's got the three points for the Scotties as well in that opening quarter. It's Martin, Nunley, Jalen Bradley, Walbert, and Jeremiah Driver for the Scotties. Walbert's going to pull up from a three for the top of the key. No good. Rebound goes to Kenyon Martin. It's Crane with it. He kicks it off in the hands now of Rowlett. He's got it. It's in the hands of Kenyon Martin. He goes down the lane, puts up a shot that's good. That's a South Central Bank shot. It's 20 to three, Colonels. Martin just muffled his way to the basket. That time. He's got it. He's trapped. He's going to lose it out of bounds. It's going to be Scotty basketball. Joe, we talked about this in the pregame. Scotty's in early deficits. It's a 20 to three deficit. Yeah, they, they could not be playing any worse right now, Chase, just to be honest. Martin throws it into Walbert. He's guarded by Crane. Walbert's going to get a screen. He's picked up by Barker. Walbert's looking. He picks up his dribble. It's over to Martin. Martin's got it now. He throws a cross-court pass to Nunley. Nunley pump fakes. He drives down the lane now. Puts up a floater. Bounces around and out. Rebound goes to Jeremiah Driver. He goes back up with it. He is fouled. Just a lid on the basket right now, Chase. Not much else you can say. Foul goes on Williams. That's his second team's first even of the, good, the quarter. Even the good looks the Scotties are getting are not falling. Jeremiah Drivers at the SCRTC free throw line. He's going to shoot two. His free throw attempt bounces around and out. JoJo Driver checks in for the Scotties. He replaces Walbert. As Jeremiah Drivers at the line for one. His second attempt is good. He goes one of two at the line. It's a 20 to four lead for the Colonels. Just starting in the second quarter as Crane's got it for the Colonels, guarded by JoJo Driver. He's got it up top. He's going to get a screen there by Kenyon Martin. It's in the corner to Rowett. Rowett's being guarded by Bradley. It's going to be over to Crane again. He's got it on the right side. 6.45 left in this second quarter. Crane brings it out top. He's going to get a screen by Martin. Now he drives down inside. He pulls up for a jumper at the elbow. It's no good. Rebound goes to JoJo Driver for the Scotties. He quickly pushes the pace to the other end. He's got it. Drives down inside. Spin moving lane. It's out to Nunley, but they're going to get a foul here on the Colonels. As Barron County, the Trojanettes, win 56-52 against the Lady Gators. That foul goes on Jalen Crane, his first team's second of the quarter. It's going to be Scotty's ball underneath as JoJo Driver's looking to get it in. He gets it in to Jeremiah Driver over to Nunley. It's going to be over to JoJo Driver. He thought about the three, does not shoot. He picks up his dribble. He gets it off to Martin, who is guarded by Kenyon Martin. 
Bradley has it for the Scotties. He gets it off Jeremiah Driver. He has it now. He got it. Back up to Bradley. Bradley couldn't get the shot off now. Bradley has it. It's going to be out to Jeremiah Driver. He's going to shoot a three from the top of the key. No good. Rebound is going to be tipped there by Barker. Straight into the hands of Crane. Crane's got it. He's cut off the elbow. Now he has it inside. He goes up with a shot that's good. That's a South Central bank shot. I think he got it with a travel right there, Chase. It's a 22 to 4 lead for the Colonels. And it's going to be into Jalen Bradley's hands. He's going to go down the lane. Kicks off Jeremiah Driver. He puts it. Oh, he missed the layup, but he is going to be fouled. It hit the rim and come out. I mean, you can't slap the backboard like that. Should that not be goaltending as well? That's what I was just thinking. That foul goes on Kenyon Martin, his first, team's third of the quarter. They're going to give Jeremiah Driver two shots here at the SCRTC free throw line. His first free throw is good. It's going to be Maxie to check in. He replaces Williams. It's a 22-5 game right now. Coach Buford was asking about why they're not counting that basket as well. I, I have no explanation for that. Driver's second attempt is no good. Rebound goes to Maxie. It's a nine, it's a 17-point lead as Crane comes in the front court with it for the Colonels, being guarded by JoJo Driver. It's going to be in the corner for a Barker three now. It's no good. Rebound goes to Barker, though, after the miss, but it's out of his hands. It's Jeremiah Driver. He throws it quickly ahead to Martin. Martin's got it. He goes up with it. It's good. That's a South Central Bank shot. 22-7 to seven now as Crane quickly comes into the front court. Just he's, the second field goal for Glasgow. He's got it. Drives baseline now. He's met there by two Scotty players. Puts it up and in. 24-7 lead. As Walbert quickly goes the other way with it. He's trapped. It's into Jeremiah Driver. He's got it. Goes down inside. Puts up a sh wild shot that goes in. I don't know how he got it to go, but he did. Quickly up and down we go. It's a 24 to 9 lead as Crane brings it quickly into the front court. He's going to drive down the lane now. He's met by Jeremiah Driver. He's got a nice pass there to Kenyon Martin. He puts it up and in. Quickly into JoJo Driver now. He's looking to push the pace. He's got it down the lane. It's going to be stripped by a Colonel player. He's got it in the corner now. It's back out to Jeremiah Driver. It's going to be back to Walbert. It's a 26 9 lead for the Colonels. 4.33 left in this quarter as Walbert's got it. He's going to pull it for a three at the top of the key. It's no good. Rebound goes in the hands of Maxi. He gives it off to Crane. Crane's got it in the front court. He's going to drive down inside. Goes around JoJo Driver. His shot's no good, but he is fouled. That foul goes on Jeremiah Driver. That's his first team first of the quarter. Sends Jalen Crane to the SCRTC free throw line. He's going to shoot two. Jalen 2-2 two, two so far on the night. He's already put up 12 shots in this ball game from the field. This Crane's first free throw attempt is good. It's going to be Allen and Mitten for the Scotties. It's going to be Jeremiah Driver and Nunley for the Scotties that goes to the bench. It's a 27-9 lead. As Crane's got one more at the SCRTC free throw line. His second attempt is good as well. He's 4-4 four, four at the line. He has 12 points. It's a 28-9 lead. As JoJo Driver's quickly into the front court. He is trapped. It's going to be out to Walbert. Walbert drives baseline. He goes up with a shot. It's no good. They're not even going to call a foul there. Well, that was a whole lot of contact right there. The official indicating the Caverna player went straight up and down, but the Glasgow faithful and Coach Buford totally disagreeing with that. It's going to be JoJo Driver to throw it in for the Skies. He gets it in the mitten. It's going to be over to Walbert. Walbert has it now. It's over to Martin. Martin thought about three. Pulls up from the free throw line. Jump shot now. It's no good. Rebound goes in the hands of Beeler for the Colonels who just checked in. Crane's got it now. 28-9 lead for the Colonels. 3.53 left in the quarter. As it's going to get a screen from Martin. Crane has it. Crane's looking to drive. He will now. He goes up with a shot that's good. That's a South Central Bank shot. Crane's pretty smooth. What, Martin's got it in the front court. He's going to go to the rim, and he is going to lay it. He's going to dunk it in to 30-11 to now. Scotty Trail by 19, needing a big push here at the end of the half. As Crane's got it, it's going to be inside to Maxie, and he's going to get called for a charge. That's his second, team fourth of the quarter. It's going to be Williams to come in the game here. 
I just got a text from a fellow official of ours. It says, rule change, smacking the backboard is legal as long as the play is on the ball. It really? is goaltending if cool. contact is made with the ball after it hits the backboard. I was not aware that you could slap the backboard I, now. I was not here. Jarrett Martin has it for Scott. He's off to Allen. Allen's going to go down inside. He pulls over a jumper. It's blocked. It was blocked there by Williams. It's Crane with it for the Colonels. He goes down the lane. He lays, He misses the layup. Rebound is going to go to Williams, but he steps on the baseline. Crane has put up a lot of shots so far. Had 14 of them. 14 shots. He's 5 of 14 from the field so far. It's a 30 to 11 lead for the Colonels as well. As Martin's looking to get it in for Scott, he gets it in the Walbert. He has these double teams. He's looking for somebody to get it to. Gets it off to Allen. His pass is going to be tipped out of bounds there off of Kenyon Martin with 3.03 left in the quarter. The 30 to 11 lead for the Colonels. Martin, excuse me, Allen gets it into Walbert. Walbert's got it in the front court. It's back to JoJo Driver. Over to Martin in the corner. Martin's got it. He's going to go to the rim. Nice move, and he is going to be fouled. Scotty's need to see more of that right there, I believe. Is I that agree. foul? He's going to go on Kenyon Martin. That's his second. The team fifth of the quarter. That's going to send Jarrett Martin to the SCRTC free line where he is going to shoot two. Martin is one of one at the line so far. His first free throw this time is no good. Martin's got one more. It's a 30 to 11 lead for the Colonels. Martin's second attempt is good. 30 to 12 lead for the Colonels. 248 left in the second quarter as Crane has it in the front court. Guarded by JoJo Driver. It's going to be out to Martin. It's going to be inside now to Williams. He turns around Jarrett Martin. He can't go anywhere with it. He kicks it out to Kenyon Martin. And there's going to be a three-second call inside there on the Colonels. That was really good defense that time by Jarrett Martin. As Nunley checks in for the Skies, he replaces Kane and Allen. The seventh Caverna turnover. Very fast game so far as Jarrett Martin gets it into J.C. Walbert. He's going to bring up the sideline out. It's a 2-2-1 press for the Colonels. He's trapped. It's off to JoJo Driver. He is trapped. Gets it off to Quinn Nunley. He's going to pull up for a three now. No good. Rebound goes to Williams for the Colonels. Scotty can't catch a break on getting a basket right now. It's Crane with it for the Colonels. He's looking. He gets it off in the corner to Beeler. It's going to be a turnover for the Colonels, though. It's in the hands of Martin now. It's a steal by Landon Mitten. As Jarrett Martin's going to bring it across time on two minutes to go in this first quarter. Martin has it up top, gets it off the wall, but Walbert's going to drive inside now. Spin move on Crane. He goes up with a shot. It's good. That's a South Central bank shot. It's Walbert's first bucket of the night. It's a 30 to 14 lead for the Colonels. As Crane has it in the front court. It's being guarded by JoJo Driver. Gets a screen from Kenyon Martin. He goes around. His shot is no good, but he is fouled. That foul, foul goes on JoJo Driver. That's his second, team fourth of the game, second of the quarter. That sends Jalen Crane to the SCRTC free throw line where he is going to shoot two. That's Crane's first free throw attempt. He bounces around and in. He's now five of five on the night. Kane and Allen checks into the ball game. He replaces JoJo Driver. Crane is the only player to attempt a free throw so far for Caverna. They have not made a three-point shot either, and they are up 17 points in this ball game. As Crane's got one more at the SCRTC free throw line, his second attempt is good. 32-14 game as it quickly comes in the front court to Allen. He's going to fire up a three now. Bottom. That's an Elmer Realty auction three-point shot. He was left all alone. Coach Barker is going to call a timeout for the Colonels. Oh, no. It's going to be the Scotty's timeout. Excuse me, Coach William Buford takes the timeout. We're going to take a 30-second timeout and come back on WCLU Sports. Monticello Bank first opened its doors in 1895 as a single office in Monticello, Kentucky. Today, there are 21 NBC locations across the Commonwealth. From home loans to commercial lending, Monticello Bank offers a wide variety of convenient financial services and competitive rates from local people you know and trust. Visit them at 1434 Happy Valley Road in Glasgow and let them help make the financial side of your life a little easier. Monticello Bank, where people matter. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. 
WCLU. We're back at Caverna High School. Chase Landrum alongside Joe Myers. We got an HVAC Services instant replay. It's going to be the Kane and Allen three there. They got the Skies back within 15. It's going to be Caverna basketball as Crane brings it to the front court. Is the Scotties going a 2-3 zone right here? Is this what I see? It looks it's like a 2-3 it. zone for the Scotties. First time I think I've seen this all year. It's going to be over to Crane for the Colonels. It's back out to Beeler. He picks up his dribble. He's looking for Crane. Gets it to Crane with 115 left on the clock. Now, Caverna looks a little confused by it, too, I think Chase. they are. I don't think they were expecting this. It's going to be over in the hands now. Rowlett, he brings it back. He gets it in the middle now to Martin. It's back out to Crane. Crane's got it. He drives down inside. It's out for a three-pointer by Beeler. That's good. That's an Elmore Realty auction three-point shot. It's 35 to 17 now with 50 seconds left in the half. It's off to Jarrett Martin in the corner now. He brings it back out top now. He's being guarded by Martin. He's got it now. He kicks it in the corner for an Allen three now. It's good. That's an Elmore Realty auction three-point shot. 35 to 20 is the Scotty's looking. Cut down the lead here at the end of the first half. 30 seconds left in the half. Good answer that time by Keenan. As Crane's got it against a 2-3 zone for the Scotties. He's probably looking to hold for the last shot right here. As the car looks a little confused by this, it's out to Beeler. He's going to drive. He looks like he's going to drive around. Robert, he, he pulls up for a jumper in the lane. It's no good. Rebound goes to Williams. It's out to Crane with 14 seconds left in the half. Crane's got it. He brings it back out to midcourt with 10. With seven now, Crane's got it. He's going to get the offense going. It's going to be back to Crane up top with four. Crane's got it with three. It's going to be for a three-pointer there by Rowlett. It's no good. It's a 35-20 to 20 game at the half. We'll come back after a five-minute timeout with the Don Franklin Halftime Show on WCLU Sports. Hardy's two for five dollar breakfast bake goodness into your morning. Choose a biscuit with sausage and egg, biscuit and gravy, or a country fried steak biscuit. Any two, just five dollars. Hardy's goodness in the making. Get exclusive offers on the Hardy's app. We know there's a big difference between being in a community and being part of the community. That's why here in Glasgow, we cheer on the Scotties. We work hard every day to make a positive impact on the community we call home. Behind our golden arches, we strive daily to serve delicious food and treats. If you could only smell this McDonald's ad, you'd smell how delicious this burger and fries really are. Join our McTeam. To learn how, text KY209 to 38000. Benefits include a sign-on bonus up to $500. Kentucky Farm Bureau agents wear a lot of hats. They're coaches, volunteers, church members, neighbors, someone who's there when you need them, especially when you need them most. That may be a lot of hats, but they're all the perfect fit. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. Hey, son, what you doing? Daddy, I'm going to own a dealership one day. All right, I'll dream with you. From one small dream to over 25 dealerships in the state of Kentucky, we have set out to provide Kentuckians with reliable vehicles and the best customer service for over 50 years. This may have started with a simple dream, but our dedication to our customers will go on for generations. Are you looking for a new career where you'll be a part of a family-owned business for over 50 years? Walbert Trucking is a trucking company based right here in Glasgow. With Walbert Trucking, you'll get full benefits, great pay, and 401k. And you'll be home daily. Unlimited possibilities await you. Apply today and become a member of the Walbert Trucking Team. 106 Sean Lane in Glasgow, 651-6784. We're not superheroes, but when people need us, we answer the call. We're not weathermen, but we know the Kentucky seasons like the back of our hands. For over 40 years, we've serviced any brand, any time, with the same day service guarantee. Now that's a big promise, and that's probably why no one else does it. So when dealing with your heating and cooling, call HVAC Services, and you'll have the right team by your side. 
When you come into Garcia's Grill, you're welcomed with a smile and you'll love the atmosphere. Garcia's was voted by the community as the best overall restaurant for the past two years. Great food at a great value. They serve fresh, delicious, traditional Mexican dishes, incredible pasta, burgers, steaks, and seafood. People say you can never get burnt out on this restaurant because of all the amazing choices. Garcia's Grill, owned and operated by the Gomez Garcia family. Check them out on North Ray Street in Glasgow and on Facebook. Garcia's Grill, a different kind of Mexican restaurant. South Central Bank has been investing in the Glasgow community for over 50 years. During that time, we've learned a thing or two about hard work, relationships, and a vision for success. South Central Bank is designed to make a difference in the prosperity of our customers and the communities it serves. We want to be a part of your success. Visit SouthCentralBank.com. South Central Bank. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. With a history of scoring touchdowns and breaking records, Dakota Elmore knows a thing or two about hard work. At Elmore Realty and Auction, his team, often referred to as the A-Team, applies that same work ethic in how they serve this community. With a combined 200 years of experience, the team serves our commercial industry, helps families find their dream home, and makes your auction an easy, profitable, and positive experience. Elmore Realty and Auction, trusted since 1935. Check them out on Facebook for listings and auctions. Hardy's newest handcrafted recipe, candied bacon. Coated with caramelized brown sugar and a hint of pepper to add a whole new level of goodness to breakfast, lunch, dinner, or anytime. Hardy's, goodness in the making. Glasgow Scotty's Basketball on WCLU. Brought to you by Don Franklin Auto, Walbert Trucking, South Central Bank, HVAC Services, South Central Rural Telecommunications Cooperative, Garcia's Grill, Elmore Realty and Auction, Hardee's, TJ Regional Health, McDonald's, Monticello Bank, and Kentucky Farm Bureau agent Joe Myers. Go at him! Go at him! It's time for the Don Franklin Auto Halftime Report. We're back here at Kavarner High School. Chase Landrum alongside Joe Myers. We got the Don Franklin halftime show now. The Scotty Trail by 15 at the half. It's a 35 to 20 lead for the Colonels. I think Joe's ready to do the Garcia grills his link staff. I'll let Joe take it away. All righty, thank you, sir. Kavarner has scored 18 points in that first quarter, 17 in the second for their halftime total of 35. Eight turnovers in the first half for the Colonels. Kavarner shoots 14 of 29 from the field. For 48%, they were one of seven from three-point range for 14%. They made all six of their free throws for 100%, and they had 18 rebounds, six of them on the offensive glass. They, uh, the uh, Colonels were led in scoring here at halftime by Jalen Crane. He has 16 points on five of 14 shooting. He is 0 of 2 from three-point range, but he is 6 of 6 at the charity strike with one rebound. Eight points for Tyson Martin. He's 4 of 4 from the field with a couple of dunks. He has two rebounds. Four points for Kenyon Martin, two of two from the field. He has four rebounds as well. Three points for Cole Beeler. He was one of two from the field overall, one of one from three-point range. He had one rebound. Two points for Desmond Rowlett. He is one of three from the field, 0 of one from three-point range. And two points for Russell Williams. He is one of one from the field. That was a two-point shot, and he leads the Colonels with five rebounds. Here at halftime, four of those five have come on the offensive end. Cortavian Maxey was 0 of 2 from the field. Those are both three-point tries. He did get three rebounds in that first half. Bo Barker, 0 of 1 from the field. That was a three-point shot. He had two rebounds in that first half as well. I may have missed it, but I think Caverna's largest lead in that first half was 19 points at 30 to 11. For the Scotties, Glasgow uh, scored just three points in the first quarter, but 17 in the second for a total of 20. They did a much better job with turnovers in that second quarter. They had 10 turnovers in the first quarter, along with one of 15 shooting in that first quarter, but just one turnover in the second quarter for the Scotties, so 11 of them here at halftime. Glasgow, 7 of 29 from the field overall. For 24%, 2 of 11 from three-point range for 18%. 4 of 7 at the charity strike for 57%. Scotty's had 10 rebounds, 3 of them on the offensive end. 
Glasgow led in scoring here at halftime by Jarek Martin, who has eight points. He is three of eight from the field, 0 of two from three-point range, two of three at the foul line, and he also leads the team with four rebounds here at the break. Six points for Kanan Allen off a couple of big threes. He's two of three overall, two of two from three-point range. Four points for Jeremiah Driver, one of four from the field. He was 0 of one from three-point range, and two of four at the free throw line. He has three rebounds, two offensive. And two points for J.C. Walbert. He was one of five in that first half. Overall, 0 of two from three-point range. JoJo Driver was 0 of two from the field, 0 of one from three-point range. He had one rebound. Quinn Nunley, 0 of four from the field, 0 of one from three-point range. He had one offensive rebound. Landon Minton, 0 of two from the field, 0 of one from three-point range. He had one rebound. Jalen Bradley, 0 of one from the field. That was a three-point try. So. Scotty's uh, never led in that first half of play. They fell behind six to nothing before they scored and never did uh, take the lead in that game. But Scotty's trail here at halftime, 35 to 20 to the Caverna Colonels. That's a look at your Garcia's Grill sizzling stats. Thank you, Joe. We've got about 1.30 left here before the HVAC third quarter. We can just go ahead and talk about this first half a little bit. It was the Scotty's turnovers was the real story in the quarter or in the first quarter. They had 10 first quarter turnovers as we talked about. That basically gave them the deficit. They got out to the current Corona got out to a 20 to 3 lead as the Scotty's hold serve there in the second quarter. 17 to 17. It's a 35 to 20 ball game. Just the turnovers in the first half yeah. causing the Scotty's trouble. I mean, trouble. the first quarter was just an absolute disaster for Glasgow. There's no way to put it other than that. They had 10 turnovers. They're one of 15 from the field in that opening quarter. Much better in the second quarter. They were, you know, still not shooting it great, but 6 of 14 from the field. You'll take that. And only one turnover in that second quarter. So, you know, the Scotties have at least, you know, have at least kind of stabilized things. But they're going to have a hard time getting back in this ball game to win it. They're down 15 here at halftime. But all you can do is try to get it back bucket by bucket. you got to get some stops on the defensive end. We're going to take a 30-second timeout. That's going to conclude our Don Franklin halftime show. We'll be back for the HVAC third quarter after 30-second timeout on WCLU Sports. If you already have internet through SCRTC, there's a pretty good chance your speed just went up, maybe even paying less. And if you don't, check on Fiber Optic with SCRTC in your area because 500 meg is now only 70 bucks. That's 500 down and upload. And if you want more speed, SCRTC got it, up to 5 gig of it. Make the switch right now at SCRTC.com and we'll do the install free. This won't last forever. With unmatched customer support, SCRTC, your best and last Internet provider. WCLU. We're back at Caverna High School. It's Chase Landrum alongside Joe Myers. It's a 35-20 lead as we begin the HVAC third quarter. It's going to be Caverna basketball. It's going to be the same five starters for the Scotties and the same five for Caverna. Excuse me. It's going to be the same five for Caverna as well. They're going to open up with the ball to begin this third quarter of play. HVAC third quarter. As it's going to be Rowlett to throw it in for the Colonels. As we are waiting... On the third official, I don't see the third official out here. No, he was out here earlier. He was. I don't know where he's went off to. Anyways, as the Trojans are playing the Gators at Gator Gym tonight, the Trojanettes won 56 to 52 against the Lady Gators. And here's our third official. We got the HVAC third quarter. It's going to be Rowett to throw it in. He gets it into Crane. Scotties are going to come out. In a 2-3 zone to begin this third quarter. As Crane's got it. He's going to get a scream from Parker. Crane's got it. It's inside to Martin. He's going to miss the dunk. Rebound goes to Jarrett Martin for Scotty's. He's out to the races. Martin's got it. He's going to go to the rim and miss the shot. Rebound goes in the hands of Tyson Martin for the Colonels. And Crane's got it. Crane gets it out to Barker. It's in the corner. Crane, he drives baseline now. He's cut off there by JoJo Driver. It's going to be... A, and it's going to be a steal by Walbert as Crane tried to save it in. Walbert's got it going the other way. He's going to go up for the shot. It's no good, but he is fouled. That foul goes on Kenyon Martin. That's his third team first of the second half. He's going to send John Carter Walbert to the SCRTC free throw line where he's going to shoot two. Walbert's first free throw bounces around and out. 
Walker first free throw was no good there. He's got one more at the SCRTC free throw line. JC doesn't miss very many. A very rare miss there by John Carter. 85% on the year. His second attempt is good, though, so he goes one of two at the line. It's a 20 to 35 to 21 lead for the Colonel. It's Crane with it against a 2-3 zone for the Skies. He gets a screen from Barker. Crane picks, or Walbert picks up Crane. He picks up his dribble. Now he's looking for somebody. He can't get it to anybody. It's now over there to Crane. Now Crane's got it down the lane. He gets it inside to Martin, who, oh, he almost <laughs> missed the layup. That's going to be a layup there by Tyson Martin. The 37 to 21 lead for the Colonels as it comes across the half court to Martin for the Scotties over to Walbert. Colonels in a man to man open up his half. It's off to Jeremiah Driver for the Scotties. He gets it off to Jarrett Martin. Martin has it, kicks off in court to JoJo Driver. He gets a screen from Martin. It's back to Martin in the corner. He's guarded by Tyson Martin. Or Kenny Martin, excuse me. Martin's going to bring it out top for the Scotties. 6.39 left in HVAC third quarter. Martin's got it up top. Martin's got it. He's going to drive down inside. Kicks out to Walbert in the corner. Walbert has it. He has it in the lane. Pulls up for a jumper in the lane. It's good. It's a 37 23 game now. The Scotties hold serve after going down 20 to 3. Five it's points for JC. It's Crane with it against the 2 3 zone for the Scotties. It's going to be over to Martin. It's back in the hands of Rowlett. Rowlett gets it off to Kenyon Martin. He goes in the lane, puts it up, and misses the shot. Rebound. They're going to get They're going to get Martin there with his fourth foul as well for going over the back. It's going to be his fourth team second of the quarter. That quickly sends Williams into the lineup to replace Kenyon Martin. Four fouls with 6.07 left in the HVAC third quarter. As it comes into Walbert for this guy, he goes up the sideline now. He, he has it. He's picked up by that's Rowley. Walbert has it. Gets over to Jeremiah Driver. He thought about three. He does not shoot. It's back to Walbert. Walbert's got it for the Scotties who trail by 14, 37 to 23. Walbert has it. Gets off Jeremiah Driver for the Scotties. He's looking to get it off somebody. Gets it off to Jarrett Martin. Martin's got it. He spin moves in the lane. Goes up with the shot. It's no good, but he is fouled. Scotty's playing with more intensity this half as that foul goes on Williams. That's now his third, team's third of the quarter. Sends Jarrett Martin to the SCRTC free climb where he's going to shoot two. Playing much more under control in this to start this second half than they didn't start the ball game, Chase. Martin's got two here. His first free throw attempt is short. Scotty's not shooting the ball well from the free throw line so far tonight. There's four or seven at halftime. One, uh, two of four in this half as Martin hits his second free throw. It's a 37 24 lead for the Colonels as the Scotties are fighting hard here to stay in this ball game. It's a 2 3 zone this possession for the Scotties. It is over to Rowlett. It's back out front to Barker. Back over to Rowlett in the corner. It's going to be inside to Martin. It's back out to Barker. Barker gets it over to Rowlett. He pulls up for a three now. It's out, in and out. Rebound goes to Rowlett on the long rebound. Puts the jumper up in the corner. No good. Rebound goes to Jarrett Martin for the Scotties. And they have a chance to cut it, cut it 2 10 right here as JoJo Driver has it on the right side. He's going to get it back out to Walbert with 5 10 left in HVAC third quarter. Walbert's got it guarded by Jalen Crane. He's going to get a screen from Jeremiah Driver. And Walbert's going to pull it from a jumper from the elbow. It's blocked. It's got a little tip on that ball there, but he's going to be fouled. That foul goes on Tyson Martin. That's now his third team's fourth of the quarter. Yeah, Caverna getting in some foul trouble here with the uh, Martin twins at least. As Walbert's going to go to the SCRTC free throw line where he's going to shoot two where the Colonels now are in a little foul trouble. Tyson Martin's got three. Kenny Martin's got four. And Williams has three as Walbert's first attempt is good. And they're going to leave Martin in the ball game here for the Colonels as well. As Walbert's second attempt is in and out. Rebound goes to Williams. It's 37 to 25. As Crane's got it, he gets over to Rowlett. He's got it on the left side. Out to Barker up top in the middle to Martin. Martin's going to go to the rim and lay it in and a foul. That foul's going to go on Landon Mitten. That's his first team's first of the quarter. It's going to send. Tyson Martin to SCRTC free throw line where he is going to shoot one as Nunley checks in for Skies. He's going to replace Mitten. Tyson Martin at the free throw line for one. His free throw attempt is good. It's a 40 to 25 lead as Nunley quickly comes in the front court and they're going to get him for a carry. He did. He did. I agree with that one. He was a little going out of control there. 
It's a 40 to 25 lead for the Colonels. 4:46 left in the HVAC third quarter. Scotty's in a 2-3 zone as Crane has it for the Colonels. It's over. It's back to Crane up top. He pulls up for a long three now. It's no good. Rebound goes to Jarrett Martin for the Scotties. He has it. He's going to bring it across the timeline. He's got it. He's got it. Now he's going to drive inside. He's met by two Colonel defenders. It's out to JoJo Driver now. He's going to drive down the lane. Puts up a floater with his left hand. It's no good. Rebound goes to Tyson Martin for the Colonels. It's in Crane's hands now. He quickly is in the front court. He's got it down the lane. He walked with it, and they're going to get him for a traveling violation. Ken Caverna turnovers. It's a 40 to 25 game, almost halfway through this HVAC third quarter. Jarrett Martin's going to get it in for the sky. It's going to come in to Walbert. Walbert's got it. He brings it across the timeline for a sky. Walbert gets it over to Nunley. He almost lost it. Gets it back in the side of Jeremiah Driver. He's got it now. He's double teamed. He loses it off to Martin. Gets it out to Walbert. Walbert's going to drive down the middle of the lane now. He pulls up for a free throw line. Jump shot's no good. Rebound goes to Williams for the Colonels. It's in her Crane's hands now. Behind the back dribble in the lane. It's in the corner now to rally. It's out to Crane. Crane's going to drive down inside. He is going to lay it up and in. That's a South Central bank shot. It's a 42-25 lead quickly. It's got his other way. Walbert's going to go to the rim. He's stripped of the ball. It's in the Rowlett's hands. Rowlett's got it going the other way. He's going to get it out to Crane. Crane's got it. He drives down the lane. Gets it off to Martin. And he lays it up and in. It's a 44-25 game now as the Colonels try to pull away again. The 19-point lead. And Coach William Buford's going to take a timeout here. It's 44-25 to with 3.24 left in the HVAC third quarter. We'll be back after a 30-second timeout on WCLU Sports. Have you injured yourself playing a sport or exercising? Sports medicine experts at TJ Regional Health are trained to get you back on the road to recovery. Whether you're dealing with sprains, fractures, knee and shoulder injuries, or other common injuries, our goal is to prevent illness and injury in active individuals of all ages and help prevent future problems to maximize your performance. Find out more at tjregionalhealth.org slash rehab. Patients first. Team always. TJ Rehabilitation Services. WCLU. We're back at Caverna High School. Chase Landrum alongside Joe Myers. It's a 44 25 lead for the Colonels. 324 left in the HVAC third quarter. The Scotties had it down to 11, but the Colonels quickly strike with an 8 0 run to get it back up to 19. Yeah, this matches Caverna's largest lead of the night here at 44 to 25. So Scotties, uh, for, for a while there, Chase, they were playing fairly under control to start the third quarter, but then Caverna got the, the pace where they wanted it, getting Glasgow running up down the floor, and the Scotties have not uh, have not played well uh, trying to play that game tonight. I know that's the way Glasgow likes to play, but Caverna is playing that game a little bit better than the Scotties are. We'll say the Colonels got a lot of size. They do. They're very physic They're a good physical team. I mean, they they are yeah they they, they don't have a bunch of small kids. And they out bring here. in Williams off the bench as well, who's got probably six five height mm -hmm. out there as well. As Walbert's got it for the Scotties. He's looking to get the Nunley. He does. He's being guarded by Williams. There's going to be a foul on the Colonels. That's going to be their fifth team foul. That goes on Barker. It's his second team fifth. He's going to send Jeremiah Driver to the SCRTC free throw line where he's going to shoot two. That is one thing the Colonels have done a lot tonight is foul. Jeremiah is two or four at the free throw line tonight. His first free throw is no good. It's a 44-25 ball game. 317 left in the HVAC. Third quarter. Scotties are 7 of 14 from the line. So Jeremiah Driver's second free throw is no good as well. Make it 7 of 15. It's in the Crane's hands now for the Colonels. He's got it guarded by Quinn Nunley. He goes right around Nunley. Has it lane. It's going to be off the Scotties there. It's going to stay Colonels basketball as Jeremiah Driver couldn't hold on to it. The 44-25 lead as Barker's looking to get it in. He gets it into Martin. Martin's got it. Throws it in the corner there to Rowlett, and he is fouled. They're going to get Jarek Martin for the foul. That's going to be his first team second of the quarter. It's going to be Colonel Ball underneath. It's going to be Barker to throw it in. Barker's looking to get it in. He gets it into Martin. He's guarded by Jeremiah Driver. It's out to Barker. He fires up a three in the right corner. It's no good. Rebound goes in the hands of Nunley, but it's taken out of his hand by Tyson Martin. He gets it off the crane. It's in the corner for a rally. Three now. That's good. 
That's an Elmer Realty auction three-point shot by Desmond Rout. It's Caverna's largest lead of the night at 47 to 25. As JoJo Driver has it for the Scotties, he has it guarded by Rout. He has it in the lane, loses it, but gets it back. It's off to Walbert. Walbert drives down the lane now, puts up a scoop shot. It's no good, but he is fouled. That foul goes on route. That's his first, team sixth of the quarter. That sends J.C. Walbert to the SCRTC free climb where he's going to shoot two. Walbert's first free throw attempt is good. It's going to be Allen for the Skies. He checks in for JoJo Driver. 47 to 26 ball game. Walbert's second attempt at SCRTC free climbs, no good. Rebound goes through the hands of Williams, in the hands of Tyson Martin. It's over to Crane. Crane's on the run now. Crane's got it on the left side. He's guarded by Nunley, and they're going to get Nunley for a foul here. That's going to be his second team third of the quarter. It's going to be Colonel Ball on the sideline. 47-26 lead, 2-23 left in HVAC third quarter. As it comes in to Crane. Crane's guarded by Nunley. Scotty's back in a man-to-man -man defense. He's going to get a screen there by Tyson Martin. Crane has it. Crane now will drive. He's at the elbow. Gets it out to Route. Route has it. Pulls it for a long jumper just outside the free throw line. It's no good. Rebound goes in the hands of Jeremiah Driver for the Scotties. Scotties need to get the points in a hurry here. Jarrett Martin has it for two, point, two minutes left in the quarter. Martin has it. He drives down the lane. Kicks it out to Nunley. Nunley has it. Gets it out to Jeremiah Driver. He thought about three. He does not. Back out to Walbert at the top of the circle. He's going to get a screen from Jeremiah Driver now. Walbert has it. He has it on the baseline. He loses it. It's in the hands of Rowlett. And he's going to pick up a foul here as well. Probably a frustration foul on Crane. That's going to be Walbert's first. Team's fourth of the quarter. The 47-26 ball game. Got he's up to 15 turnovers now. Four of them here in this third quarter. That's going to be Rowlett to throw it in for the Colonels. He's going to get it into Williams. Back to Rowlett. It's going to be over to Crane now. He's being guarded by Nunley. Crane's got it. He's guarded by Nunley. 136 left in HVAC third quarter. Crane's got it just at the midcourt line. Now he's looking to drive down the lane. He will. He goes up with a shot that's good. That's a South Central bank shot as well. Largest lead of the night, 49-26. Quickly to Allen on the other end. Over to Jeremiah Driver. It's out to Nunley. Now he thought about three. Doesn't shoot. It's off to Walbert up top. It's going to be Walbert with it for this guy. He's got it on the right side now. He gets, tried to get inside Jeremiah Driver, but it's going to be out of bounds. Ooh, off the Colonels, luckily. I think they're going to overturn this call. It's going to be a yeah, turnover on the Scotty. The officials are going to talk about this and probably correct it and give it to Caverna, I would think. They yeah. do. It's the right call. 49-26. 107 left in the HVAC third quarter. As it comes in now to Rowlett, he's got it. And Scotty's bringing full court pressure. It's Allen guarding him. Rowlett's got it going down the middle of the lane, and he is going to be fouled by Allen. It's going to be his first, team's fifth of the quarter. It's going to send Desmond Rowlett to the SCRTC free throw line where he's going to shoot two. It'll be his first trip to the line in the ball game. Rowlett has five points. As the Colonels lead 49-26. Rowlett's first free throw attempt is good. It's going to be Maxi to check in for the Colonels. He replaces Tyson Martin. This is Caverna's largest lead of the night at 51 to 26. And Rowlett's second free throw is good as well. Since Beeler back in, he replaces Rowlett. It's a 51 26 lead for the Colonels. One minute left in HVAC third quarter. Walbert has it. It's over to Jarrett Martin for the Scotties. Martin has it. He has an inside spin moving lane. Pulls up in the lane. His shot is good. 51-28 as Crane brings it in the front court for the Colonels. He's being guarded by Nunley. Crane has it at the midcourt line. He gives it off to Maxey. He's got it. It's back out top to Williams over to Beeler. Crane's going to come get it for the Colonels. He's being guarded by Nunley. 30 seconds left in HVAC third quarter as Crane brings it out to the center court line, guarded by Nunley. 
Crane's got it. He's looking to drive. He does not. Now he will go down the middle lane. He gets it inside there to Maxi. He puts it up and in. Nice pass there by Jalen Crane. It's a 53-28 lead as Nunley's got it. He picks up his dribble, gets off to Walbert. Walbert's going to drive down the middle of the lane now. He loses it. He gets it back. It's in the hands of Nunley for a three in the corner now. It's no good, but he is fouled on a three-point attempt. That foul goes on Williams. That's his fourth. Team seventh of the quarter. That's going to send Quinn Nunley to the SCRTC free line where he's going to shoot three. It's a 53-28 lead for the Colonels as well. Quinn is 64% foul shooter on the season. His first free throw is no good. He's got two more at the SCRTC free throw line. His second attempt is no good as well. Scott is now 8 of 19 from the free throw line. Tyson Martin checks in for the Colonels. He replaces Williams. nunley has got one more here. His third attempt is good, so he gets one of three at the line. It quickly comes in the crane. He throws it up from just outside half court, and he barely misses it. It's a 53-29 game after three quarters of play. We'll be back with the Walbert Trucking fourth quarter after 30-second timeout on WCOU Sports. Monticello Bank first opened its doors in 1895 as a single office in Monticello, Kentucky. Today, there are 21 NBC locations across the Commonwealth. From home loans to commercial lending, Monticello Bank offers a wide variety of convenient financial services and competitive rates from local people you know and trust. Visit them at 1434 Happy Valley Road in Glasgow and let them help make the financial side of your life a little easier. Monticello Bank, where people matter. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. WCLU. We're back at Caverna High School. Chase Landrum alongside Joe Myers. The Scotties trail 53 to 29 to the Caverna Colonels after three quarters of play. We've got the Walbert Trucking fourth quarter here very shortly as the Metcalf Lady Hornets defeated the Lady Lakers 58 to 47 in a district contest in the 16th district tonight. As Joe is finishing adding up our third quarter stats here. Scotty's have, this is their one of their largest deficits of the night at 53-29. As Joe was stating earlier, the turnovers for the Scotties has been an issue, and the free throw shooting has been an issue as well, as also Caverna's pressure of the ball on the Scotties. It's going to be Scotty's ball here to open up this fourth Walbert trucking fourth quarter. It's going to be Walbert, Martin, JoJo Driver, Jalen Bradley, and Landon Mitten to open the quarter for the Scotties. It's going to be Walbert to throw it in for the Scotties as well. He's going to get in Jarrett Martin. Scotty's trail by 24 to begin this Walbert trucking fourth for his Martin's got it at the top for the Scotties. He's got it. He's going down the lane. He tries to get it out in the corner here to Walbert. He does. He drives baseline now. It's going to be tapped out of bounds there by Jalen Crane. It's going to stay Scotty basketball. Jarrett Martin's going to throw it in for the Scotties. Going to look to get it in. He gets it in to JoJo Driver up top. He has it. He's looking to drive. He has it in the lane now. He can't drive, so he brings it back out. Now he will drive. He's going to go up the shot. It's good. That's a South Central bank shot for JoJo Driver. That's his first points of the night. It's 53-31 as Crank quickly comes up for the Colonels. It's going to be over to Maxi in the corner. It's going to be a steal for the Skies, and Walbert's going to be fouled. That foul is going to go on Jalen Crane. That's his second team's first of the quarter. It's going to be Rowlett and Kenyon Martin for the Colonels. And the officials here are talking at the scorer's table. Looking at the clock. Oh, no, they're looking at team fouls. Team fouls. They didn't reset the team fouls there. Classical ball, 53-31, 7-22 left in the Walbert Trucking fourth quarter. It comes into Jarrett Martin for the Scotty. He is going to be guarded here by Tyson Martin. It's over to JoJo Driver now. He's going to fire up a three on the right side. It's no good. Rebound goes to Crane for the Colonels. He's being picked up full court by Walbert now. It's going to be a trap here at half court as Bradley's going to come to help. Crane goes down the lane. His shot's no good, but he is fouled. 
That foul is going to go on John Carter Roberts, his second team's first of the quarter. That's going to send Jalen Crane to the SCRTC free climb where he's going to shoot two. Crane in a little bit of pain out there now after that foul. Crane's at the line for two here. Right arm may be a little sore. He shot 18 shots and seven free throws. His now. first free throw is good. Cumberland County leads Allen County 28 to 21 at the half in boys action. As Crane's first free throw was good. The 54-31 lead for the Colonels. Crane's at the line for one more here. His second attempt is good as well. He is a perfect eight of eight on the night. 55-31, Colonels lead. As Walbert's got it in the front court, he gets a screen from Martin. Walbert still has it, he's gonna drive down the right side, his shot is no good, but he is fouled. The foul is going to go on Bo Barker. That's his third, team second of the quarter. It's going to send John Carter Walworth to the SCRTC free climb where he's going to shoot two. Walworth's first free throw attempt is good. It's going to be Kane and Allen checking in for his guys. He's going to replace Landon Mitten. As Walbert took the line here for one. His second attempt is good as well. It's 55-33. 6.50 left in the Walbert trucking fourth court. As it goes to Kenyon Martin on the left side now, he gets in the hands of Crane. Crane is double teamed by Martin and Walbert. It's going to be two Martin in the lane. His layup is good. As Kenyon Martin hits his sixth point of the night. Colonels lead 57 to 33 as Jarrett Martin has he drives baseline now. He's going to go up with a shot. It's good and a foul. Are they going to count it? They're going to not nope. count that bucket. Nope. Wow. That foul goes on Tyson Martin. That's his fourth now. Team's third of the quarter. It's going to be Jarrett Martin throw it in for this guy. It's into Walbert. He fires up a three in the right corner. It's no good. Rebound goes to Tyson Martin for the Colonels. He quickly goes the other way. He's got it going to the rim. He lays it up and misses the layup. Rebound goes to Kenyon Martin. He puts it back up and in. That's a South Central bank shot. It's a 59-33 lead. Biggest lead of the night for the Colonels is Jarrett Martin loses it to the Scotty. Everybody's on the floor. Crane has it. He's going the other way with it. He's going to lay it up and dunk it down. It's a 61-33 lead for the Colonels now. Biggest lead of the night at 28 for the Colonels as Jarrett Martin has it in the corner now. It's off for the Allen in the corner. He drives baseline now. He goes up with a shot. It's no good. Rebound goes to Crane for the Colonels. He's got it going the other way. He has it in the corner. He's going to look to drive now. He does not. He brings it back out. As Crane's got it guarded by Jarrett Martin, and they're going to get Martin for a foul now. And some mouthing going on between the two, and they're going to get a double technical foul on Jarrett Martin and Jalen Crane. That's going to be... It's going to be Jarrett Martin. And they're going to get another, they're going to get a technical foul on another Scotty player right here. Who did this technical go on, Joe? Was that on Kane and Allen, maybe? I was not watching, Chase. I don't know. They're going to get Kane and Allen for that technical foul. It's going to be his second foul. Matthew next to me here is saying it was on Jarrett Martin. Both what? Technicals. There's two technical. No, I think they got one on Jarrett Martin, and the other is on maybe Kane and Allen. We're going to find out here. Yeah, I don't know. As Coach Tucker Kirkpatrick comes to get Coach Buford away from this official before he gets a technical. The second technical was on Kane and Allen for the Scotties. It's going to be his second. Jarrett Martin also picked up a technical. That's his third. Jalen Crane picked up a technical as well. That's his third foul as well. So two technicals for the Scotties there, one on the Colonels. So I guess the Colonels will shoot two, two shots here and get the ball. It's going to be Crane to go to the SCRTC free climb where he is going to shoot two. His first free throw attempt is good. It's 
a 62 to 33 lead for the Colonels. 5.39 left in the Walbert Trucking fourth quarter as Crane's second attempt is good as well. It's going to be Colonel basketball at the 30 point lead for the Colonels, biggest lead of the night. As it's going to be Rowett to throw it in for the Colonels now. He's looking to get it in. He does get it in. It comes in to Maxi. He's got it now. He got it inside. He traveled with. They're going to get a jump ball, and it's going to stay Colonel basketball. Jeremiah Driver pinned that ball in his hand. That um, it's Walbert, Jeremiah Driver, Kane now, and Jalen Bradley and JoJo Driver for the Scotties. As it's Barker looking to get it, and he gets it in there to Martin. It's back out to Crane. 5.30 left in the Walbert trucking. Fourth quarter. Crane has it. He's looking to drive. He will down the lane. Spin move. Puts up a shot. No good. Rebound goes to JoJo Driver for the Scotties. He's got it on the right side. It's in the corner for a Bradley. Three now. It's an air ball. Rebound goes to Barker for the Colonels. He gets it in the hands of Crane. Crane's double teamed in the backcourt here. He breaks it. Crane does have it in the front court. Gets it off to Rowett. Rowett has it. It's going to be inside to Martin. Martin's going to go up the shot. He almost threw it down. Misses the dunk. Rebound goes to JoJo Driver. It's going to be over to Bradley. He's going to lay it up and in. That's a South Central Bank shot. The 63-35 to 35 lead for the Colonels. And Crane's got it for the Colonels. He brings it in the front court. He is going to go up the shot. It's going to be out to Barker now, who thought about a three, but he doesn't shoot it. It's back out to Maxi. Maxie's got it. Maxie's going to go down the lane. He's going to lose it out of bounds. It's going to go to the Scotties. It's going to be Nunley check in for the Scotties. He is going to replace JoJo Driver. Four thirty-four left in the Walbert Trucking fourth quarter. It's a sixty-three thirty-five lead for the Colonels. Walbert's got it in the front court now. He's going to drive down the lane, puts up a shot in the lane. It's good, but he looked like he was fouled. No call. 63-37 as it comes into Rowland. He is going to be double teamed in the back court. Comes in the front court. It's in the Maxi. Maxi drives down the lane, and they're going to get a charge here on Maxi. That's his third. Kane Allen took that charge for the Scotties. It's going to be Jarrett Martin to check in for the Scotties. It's going to be Martin to check in for this guy. He checks in for John Carter Walbert with 4.14 left in the ballgame. It's a 63-37 lead for the Colonels. Did you say that was Maxie's third or fourth? That is Maxie's third. Okay. It's going to be thrown to Nunley on the left side here. He's got in lane, kicks out to Jeremiah Driver. He fires up a three now. It's no good. Rebound goes to Kenyon Martin for the Colonels. He pushes the pace the other way. He's got it going down the lane, goes in the lane, puts it up and in, and a foul. That foul's going to go on Jeremiah Driver. That's his second. The team's fifth of the quarter. Sends Kenyon Martin to the SCRTC free throw line where he's going to shoot one. 3.58 left in the ball game. His free throw attempt is good. As Williams checks into the ball game for the Colonels, he replaces Barker. It's going to be Jalen Bradley for this guy. He's bringing it up this time. He's guarded by Rowett. Bradley has it. He's going to drive down the lane. He kicks out to Nunley. Nunley has it. He pulls up for a jump shot that's good. Still 66 39 game. As it's going to be Maxie to bring in the front court for the Colonels. He goes down the lane. He puts up a shot that's no good. Rebound goes to Jeremiah Driver for the Scotties. He's looking up. He gets it off to Martin. Jarek has it now. It's in the corner. It goes to Nunley. He puts up a short jumper in the corner. It bounces around and out. Rebound goes in the hands of Maxie for the Colonels. Into the hands of Jalen Crane. And the Scotties are going to come with a trap here. Crane gets it over to Rowett. Rowett has it in the front court. It's over to Maxie. 3.15 left in the Walbert Trucking fourth quarter. Maxie is driving down the middle of the lane. He loses it, but he gets it back. He's going to throw it out top to Jalen Crane. And it's going to be a timeout for Coach Steve Barker. We will also take a 30-second timeout here and come back on WCLU Sports. 
We know there's a big difference between being in a community and being part of the community. That's why here in Glasgow, we cheer on the Scotties. We work hard every day to make a positive impact on the community we call home. Behind our golden arches, we strive daily to serve delicious food and treats. If you could only smell this McDonald's ad, you'd smell how delicious this burger and fries really are. Join our McTeam. To learn how, text KY209 to 38000. Benefits include a sign-on bonus up to $500. Ready? WCLU. We're back here at Carano High School. Chase Landrum alongside Joe Myers. Scotty's trail 66 to 39 with 307 left in the Walbert trucking fourth quarter to the Colonels. It's going to be Scotty basketball. It's Martin Walbert, Nunley, Jeremiah Driver, and Kanan Allen for the Scotties. As it's going to be. Caverna basketball. They were going to give it to the Scotties right there. Caverna basketball. It's in to Maxi. It's back to Williams now. It's going to be Crane to come get it for the Colonels. Three minutes left in the Walbert trucking fourth quarter. Crane brings it out to the circle. It's going to be over to Williams, out to Martin. It's going to be back to Crane on the right side. It's going to be inside to Williams. He goes up with shots. No good, but he is fouled. That foul goes on. John Carter Wall with his third. It's going to send Russell Williams to SCRTC free throw, where he's going to shoot two, where the Colonels have not missed a free throw tonight. Williams' free throw attempt is no good. You jinxed him. <laughs> Yo, <old> broadcaster jinx. <laughs> that's about the only thing that's went wrong for the Colonels tonight, though. As Williams got one more here at the SCRTC free throw line. His second attempt now is good. He goes one of two at the line. It's a 67 39 lead as Walbert brings him to the front court for this guy. It's going to be a. What are they going to get here? We had a fan that was basically standing on the court down there along the baseline. Got to move him back. <laughs> so they're going to give it to the Scotties here. So it's going to be Martin gets it into Walbert. Walbert brings it back into the front court. He's being guarded by Crane. He gets it inside to Jeremiah Driver now, who has it on Williams. He goes up with a shot. It is no good. Rebound goes to the hands of Kenyon Martin for the Colonels as Crane's got it. Crane's going to be fouled here by Quinn Nunley. That's going to be his third. It's going to send Jalen Crane to the SCRTC free throw line where he's going to shoot two. Where Crane has 16, 18, 22, 26 points I've got him for right now. He's 10 of 10 at the free throw line. I don't think he's going to miss here either. Oh, I see what you're doing. His first free yeah. throw is good. Didn't work. <laughs> the 68-39 game, 2.33 left in the Walbert trucking fourth quarter. As Crane's at the line for one more here. His second free throw attempt is good as well. It's going to be Beaver to check in. He replaces Jalen Crane, who had a big night for the Colonels. Yep. 28, that's what I have him with too, Chase. It's a 30-point lead for the Colonels as Walbert comes into the front court for the Scotties. He's going to get a string from Jeremiah Drivers Williams to come pick him up. Walbert's going to drive down inside. He misses a shot, but he is fouled. That foul goes on Beaver. That's his first. It's going to send J.C. Walbert to the SCRTC free climb where he's going to shoot two. Walbert's first free throw attempt is good. It's going to be Javen Garman check in for us, guys. He's going to replace Jeremiah Driver. Walbert's second attempt is good as well. It's a 69 41 game as Rowlett gets it into Martin. He throws it ahead to Maxie. Maxie's got it. He's looking to drive on Martin. He does not. Maxie's double team is out to Rowlett. 2 12 left in the Walbert trucking fourth quarter as Maxie is double, or excuse me, yes. It's going to be Rowlett double team, but it's Beeler at half court here. He does not go over half court. It's going to be a turnover for the Colonels. Martin has it, gets it ahead to Walbert, but it's going to be a steal by Beeler of the Colonels, though, so it's going to be a turnover for the Scotties as well. He's got it going down the lane now. He's going to put up a shot that is good. 
the 71 to 41 lead for the Colonels. 147 left in the Warburg Trucking fourth quarter. Jarrett Martin has it. Pulls up for a jump shot in the lane. It's no good. Rebound goes in the hands of Maxi. Throws it ahead to Beeler, who it's going to be tipped out of his hands, out of bounds. Going to go to the Scotties. It's like we talked about in the pregame, Joe. It's Dr. Jacklin, Mr. Hyde with this team. This Scotties team has not been very good on the road. As yeah. Walbert has it in the front court. He drives down the lane. He puts up a shot that's good. That's a South Central Bank shot. I mean, it's just a fact that this guy, he's not been very good on the road this year. No doubt, you're right. As Beaver has, he pulls up for a free throw line, jump shot in and out, rebound goes to Javen Garman for the Scotties. As walbert has got it, he's got it going down the lane now. He's going to be blocked there by Williams. It's going to go out of bounds off the Colonels. It's going to be Galloway. It's also going to be Pippen. And it's going to be Bradley for the Colonels. Also, for the Scotties, it's going to be Grayson Bartley, David Dale, and Kobe Brewster to check in. And also, Jeremiah Moore. It's going to be Jeremiah Moore to get in. Gets it in the garments. Back out. It's going to be out to Moore now. He's got He's going to pull up for a three-pointer. It's good. That's an Elmer Realty an auction three-point shot. It's a 71-46 ball game. One minute left in the Walbert Trucking fourth quarter. It's in the corner to Bradley. He gets it back out. Now it's going to be Maxi with it. He puts it up and in. It's in the corner now to Brewster. He fires up a three. It's going to be an air ball. Rebound goes in the hands of Pippen for the Colonels. It's ahead in the hands of Galloway. He's got it driving baseline. And he's going to be stripped of the ball. It's in the hands of Bartley. Bartley's got it. Throws it ahead to Jeremiah Moore. He's got it going down the lane. Puts up a shot that's good. That's a South Central Bank shot. 73 to 48. 20 seconds left to go. He's built. Beeler has it. He drives down the lane now. And he is going to be stripped with it by Jeremiah Moore. With 15 seconds left. Moore brings it in the front court. He loses it. Gets it back. It's over to Bartley. Bartley's got it. Bartley has it. It's in the corner for a three-pointer. It's way off an air ball. Rebound goes in the hands of Pippen. It's going to be Beeler with it. And it's going to run out the time. The Caverna wins 73 to 48. That takes the Scotties to 6 and 11 on the year. Takes the Colonels to 13 7 on the year. We'll be back after a seven minute timeout for our Don Franklin postgame show on WCOU Sports. Hardy's two for $5 breakfast baked goodness into your morning. Choose a biscuit with sausage and egg, biscuit and gravy, or a country fried steak biscuit. Any two, just $5. Hardee's, goodness in the making. Get exclusive offers on the Hardee's app. Kentucky Farm Bureau agents wear a lot of hats. There are coaches, volunteers, church members, neighbors, someone who's there when you need them, especially when you need them most. That may be a lot of hats, but they're all the perfect fit. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. Hey, son, what you doing? Daddy, I'm going to own a dealership one day. All right, I'll dream with you. From one small dream to over 25 dealerships in the state of Kentucky, we have set out to provide Kentuckians with reliable vehicles and the best customer service for over 50 years. This may have started with a simple dream, but our dedication to our customers will go on for generations. Are you looking for a new career where you'll be a part of a family-owned business for over 50 years? Walbert Trucking is a trucking company based right here in Glasgow. With Walbert Trucking, you'll get full benefits, great pay, and 401k. And you'll be home daily. Unlimited possibilities await you. Apply today and become a member of the Walbert Trucking Team. 106 Sean Lane in Glasgow, 651-6784. We're not superheroes, but when people need us, we answer the call. We're not weathermen, but we know the Kentucky seasons like the back of our hands. For over 40 years, we've serviced any brand, any time, with a same-day service guarantee. Now that's a big promise, and that's probably why no one else does it. 
So when dealing with your heating and cooling, call HVAC Services and you'll have the right team by your side. When you come into Garcia's Grill, you're welcomed with a smile and you'll love the atmosphere. Garcia's was voted by the community as the best overall restaurant for the past two years. Great food at a great value. They serve fresh, delicious, traditional Mexican dishes, incredible pasta, burgers, steaks, and seafood. People say you can never get burnt out on this restaurant because of all the amazing choices. Garcia's Grill, owned and operated by the Gomez Garcia family. Check them out on North Race Street in Glasgow and on Facebook. Garcia's Grill, a different kind of Mexican restaurant. South Central Bank has been investing in the Glasgow community for over 50 years. During that time, we've learned a thing or two about hard work, relationships, and a vision for success. South Central Bank is designed to make a difference in the prosperity of our customers and the communities it serves. We want to be a part of your success. Visit SouthCentralBank.com. South Central Bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. With a history of scoring touchdowns and breaking records, Dakota Elmore knows a thing or two about hard work. At Elmore Realty and Auction, his team, often referred to as the A-Team, applies that same work ethic in how they serve this community. With a combined 200 years of experience, the team serves our commercial industry, helps families find their dream home, and makes your auction an easy, profitable, and positive experience. Elmore Realty and Auction, trusted since 1935. Check them out on Facebook for listings and auctions. Want to slash your cable bill? Save over $20 a month with MyStream TV from SCRTC, the savings alternative with the same great channel lineup you've always been accustomed to. Packages as low as $85 even include internet, at least 200 meg. This is a no-brainer. No more cable boxes, just an app. And you even get an extra stream. Wait till we show you catch-up TV. Compare your current service to the new MyStream TV from SCRTC, 678-2111. Call and save today. Have you injured yourself playing a sport or exercising? Sports medicine experts at TJ Regional Health are trained to get you back on the road to recovery. Whether you're dealing with sprains, fractures, knee and shoulder injuries, or other common injuries, our goal is to prevent illness and injury in active individuals of all ages and help prevent future problems to maximize your performance. Find out more at tjregionalhealth.org slash rehab. Patients first. Team always. TJ Rehabilitation Services. Monticello Bank first opened its doors in 1895 as a single office in Monticello, Kentucky. Today, there are 21 NBC locations across the Commonwealth. From home loans to commercial lending, Monticello Bank offers a wide variety of convenient financial services and competitive rates from local people you know and trust. Visit them at 1434 Happy Valley Road in Glasgow and let them help make the financial side of your life a little easier. Monticello Bank, where people matter. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. We know there's a big difference between being in a community and being part of the community. That's why here in Glasgow, we cheer on the Scotties. We work hard every day to make a positive impact on the community we call home. Behind our golden arches, we strive daily to serve delicious food and treats. If you could only smell this McDonald's ad, you'd smell how delicious this burger and fries really are. Join our McTeam. To learn how, text KY209 to 38000. Benefits include a sign-on bonus up to $500. Kentucky Farm Bureau agents wear a lot of hats. There are coaches, volunteers, church members, neighbors, someone who's there when you need them, especially when you need them most. That may be a lot of hats, but they're all the perfect fit. Kentucky Farm Bureau, big on commitment. Hardy's newest handcrafted recipe, candied bacon. Coated with caramelized brown sugar and a hint of pepper to add a whole new level of goodness to breakfast, lunch, dinner, or anytime. Hardy's, goodness in the making. Glasgow Scotty's Basketball on WCLU. Brought to you by Don Franklin Auto, Walbert Trucking, South Central Bank, HVAC Services, South Central Rural Telecommunications Cooperative, Garcia's Grill, Elmore Realty and Auction, Hardee's, TJ Regional Health, McDonald's, Monticello Bank, and Kentucky Farm Bureau Agent Joe Myers. Now, the Don Franklin Auto post-game wrap-up. We're back here at Caverna High School. It's Chase Landrum alongside Joe Myers. 
Scotty's lose tonight, 73 to 48 to Caverna. It takes Caverna 12 and or 13 and 7 on year. It drops the Scotties to 6 and 11 on the year. We got our Don Franklin post game show. We'll talk about the game here in a little bit. We're going to let Joe get going with the Garcia's grill sizzling stats. Joe, thank you, Chase, for the Caverna Colonels. They score 18 points in the first, 17 in the second, 18 in the third, and 20 in the fourth for their total of 73. 17 turnovers for the Colonels. Caverna shoots 27 of 56 from the field overall for 48%. They were 2 of 12 from three-point range for 17%. Uh, really great night at the foul line for them. 17 of 18 from the charity stripe for the Colonels for 94%. They had 34 rebounds, eight of them offensive. 28 big points for Caverna's leading scorer, Jalen Crane. He was 8 of 20 from the field. He was 0 of 4 from three-point range. A perfect 12 of 12 with the charity stripe. He also had three rebounds. 15 points for Tyson Martin. He was 7 of 9 from the field, all two-point tries. He was 1 of 1 at the charity stripe. He had six rebounds, one on the offensive end. 11 points for Kenyon Martin. He is the only other Caverna player in double figures. He's 5 of 7 from the field, all twos, and 1 of 1 from the charity stripe. He had seven rebounds, ties for the team lead in that category. Seven points for Desmond Rowlett. He was two of eight from the field and uh, one of three from three-point range. Two of two at the charity stripe. He had one offensive rebound. Five points for Cole Beeler. He was two of four from the field, one of one from three-point range. He had one rebound. Four points for Cortavian Maxey. He was two of five from the field, and he had five rebounds. Three points for Russell Williams. He is one of one from the field, one of two at the charity stripe, and he uh, tied for the team lead with seven rebounds, four of them on the offensive end. That rounds out the scoring for Caverna, but also playing Bo Barker was 0 of 3, or excuse me, 0 of 2 from three-point range. He had three rebounds, and Jamison Pippen did not uh, attempt a shot, but he did get one defensive rebound in the ball game. Caverna goes to 13-7 and seven with the victory. For the Scotties, they scored just three points in the first quarter, 17 in the second, 9 in the third, and 19 in the fourth for a total of 48. Glasgow finishes the game with 18 turnovers on the night. Scotties were 16 of 51 from the field overall for 31%, 3 of 16 from three-point range for 19%, 24, excuse me, 13 of 24 from the free throw line for 54%. Glasgow had 19 rebounds, only three Offensive rebounds all night long. Scotties were led in scoring tonight by J.C. Walbert, who ends up with 15 points. He was 4 of 9 from the field, 0 of 2 from three-point range, 7 of 10 at the charity stripe, did not get a rebound. 11 points for Jarek Martin. He was 4 of 12 from the field, 0 of 2 from three-point range. He was 3 of 5 at the free throw line. He led the team with seven boards on the night, all of them on the defensive end. Six points for Kanan Allen. He was two of four from the field, two of two from three-point range. Five points for Jeremiah Moore late in the ballgame. He was two of two from the field, one of one from three-point range. Four points for Jeremiah Driver. He was one of six from the field, 0 of two from three-point range, two of six from the free throw line. He had five rebounds, two offensive. Two points, or excuse me, three points for Quinn Nunley. He was one of six from the field, 0 of one from three-point range, one of three at the free throw line. He had two rebounds. Two points for JoJo Driver. He was one of five overall, 0 of two from three-point range. He had three rebounds. And two points for Jalen Bradley. He was one of three overall, 0 of two from three-point range. Also playing tonight, uh, Landon Minton was 0 of two from the field, 0 of one from three-point range. He had one rebound. uh, Javon Garman did not attempt a shot, but he did have one defensive rebound. Kobe Brewster also was uh, in the game. He was 0 of 1 from the field. That was a three-point try. Uh, He uh, did not score, and Grayson Bartley was 0 of 1 from the field. That was a two-point try. So the Scotties with a loss will fall to 6 and 11 overall as they fall to Caverna 73-48. That's a look at your Garcia's Grill sizzling stats. Thank you, Joe. We're going to take a quick one-minute timeout here. We'll come back with our Hardy's Hot and Fresh play of the game. We will then name our girls player of the game and our boys player of the game after a one-minute timeout on WCLU Sports. Hey, son, what you doing? Daddy, I'm going to own a dealership one day. All right, I'll dream with you. From one small dream to over 25 dealerships in the state of Kentucky, we have set out to provide Kentuckians with reliable vehicles and the best customer service for over 50 years. This may have started with a simple dream, but our dedication to our customers will go on for generations. 
Are you looking for a new career where you'll be a part of a family-owned business for over 50 years? Walbert Trucking is a trucking company based right here in Glasgow. With Walbert Trucking, you'll get full benefits, great pay, and 401k. And you'll be home daily. Unlimited possibilities await you. Apply today and become a member of the Walbert Trucking Team. 106 Sean Lane in Glasgow, 651 is on Ready? WCLU. We're back here at Caverna High School. It's Chase Landrum. We've got our – we're going to do our players of the game first. On the girls' side, we're going to go with – we're going to go with Sydney Kleikendall tonight. She had nine points tonight. She was one of one from the free throw line. We're going to go with Sydney Kleikendall for our player of the game on the ladies' guy side. On the boys' side, we're going to go with Jarek Martin. He was four of 12 shooting. He was three of five at the free throw line. He had seven rebounds all on the defensive end. He had 11 points. So Jarek's going to be our boys player of the game. Sydney Kleikendall for our girls. And our Hardy's hot and fresh play of the game here is going to come from the girls game. It's going to be the Riley Strode three in the girls game. The Lady Scotties will win 73 to 26. The Scotty boys will lose 73 to 48. It drops the Scotties to 6 and 11 on the year. The ladies' guys go to 4 and 18 on the year. Coach Buford has not come out yet. So we're going to sign off here tonight. We will catch him on Thursday night against Clinton County at home. That is a girl boy doubleheader. The first game will start at 6 p.m. in Scotty Gym against the Lady Bulldogs. The Scotties will follow that game. So we will sign off here tonight. The pregame will be at 5.50 on Thursday night. For Chase Land or Joe Myers, it's Chase Lander, and we will see you all on Thursday night in Scotty Gym. This has been Glasgow Scotty's Basketball on WCLU 103.1 FM and AM 1490. Brought to you by Don Franklin Auto, Walbert Trucking, South Central Bank, HVAC Services. South Central Rural Telecommunications Cooperative, Garcia's Grill, Elmore Realty and Auction, Hardee's, TJ Regional Health, McDonald's, Monticello Bank, and Kentucky Farm Bureau agent Joe Myers. Your home for Glasgow High School Scotty Sports, WCLU.